Ray, to get right into the action. Take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Emre. I am super, super excited to get to show off Hollow Knight 106%, true ending, no major glitches. Um, so there's a lot to cover in this run, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started in three, two, one, go. Oh, okay, so first things first, um, basically what this category is, is 106% is max completion for patch 1221. And if you're familiar with Hollow Knight speedrunning at all, um, you know that patch 1221 is basically the main no major glitches patch. This has all of the cool speed tech on it, and I personally find this category a whole lot of fun. Um, so yeah, the very first thing we did there uh, was a pause for early control and an inventory drop, and uh, I should probably introduce my commentators. Uh, I'm here with Colette MSLP. Hello. And Sabera Messia. And Sabera will be joining um, us shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Colette is also an amazing runner of this game and also runs this category. So um, she's going to be helping me out. This run is very intensive with a lot of information. Um, so I'm going to let her take the lead on a lot of stuff throughout the run. And there are several things that once we teach you guys about them, they'll apply throughout the entire run. For example, with saving, usually that's going to happen on a bench, but right here at the door out of King's Pass, we're going to encounter what's called a hard save for our first time. And that's the reason that Emre stepped foot just outside of that door before coming back in here. We're gonna head back into King's Pass in order to uh, pick up our first charm. Since charms are percent, 106 does pick up all of them, but then once she picks it up, she'll be quitting out and will reappear back at the door. And that's something that you're gonna see throughout the run. <clears throat> if you're completely unfamiliar with Hollow Knight, um, a couple things to explain up front. Uh, in addition to save quitting, uh, there's going to be some other kind of technical things like early control um, and we'll try to touch on each of those as we go along up in the upper left is the hud the orb that you see is going to be for soul which emery will use for both healing and magic spells uh, the masks are our health and right below that you'll see our geo count which is the currency of the game a little bit later, you'll also see uh, Essence up there, which is sort of a spiritual currency, um, and all that's routed out very tightly. We picked up that Geo Rock there because we're going to want 50 Geo in relatively short order in order to purchase the Stag. Here we're doing another 1-2-2-1 exclusive trick with uh, mid-air inventory drops. It is still possible to do on current patch, but it's a lot more precise. Coming up to the first gauntlet here, uh, we're gonna try to do things as fast as possible and kill the enemies with a spike instead of fighting them, and Emery did manage to hit one of them. So this is the last of our Geo. Keep in mind again, like I said, we're aiming for 50 in order to purchase the Crossroad Stag, and then we're gonna move right along. A lot of the game is cycle-based, and here you'll see the first example of that. Uh, you basically want to go right as fast as possible, so there's a particular order that you can jump and pogo over the gomes where you don't have to stop. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to continue through this, not quite as tricky as a, of, a, of a cycle, on our way up to purchase the stag. We're also going to be equipping our first charm here. Uh, Fury of the Fallen is a charm that gives you additional strength, but only when you're at 1 HP. And that additional strength is something that 106 takes advantage of a lot in the early game. Uh, once we get some stronger magic, it doesn't become quite as useful, but you will be seeing it in action here for the False Knight. Taking damage here is intentional, and opening that secret passage is also intentional, because then we won't have to open it when we come back later. So, once Emery does get into Fury, you'll also see a visual effect on the screen indicating how powerful she has become. And although it can seem scary to do a fight at just 1 HP, uh, cycles coming into play again, it's actually very safe to do this particular fight, even at 1 HP. So basically, you can hit him into a stagger before he has a chance to hit you, and then coming out of the stagger again, as long as you hit the cycle, 
before he can even swing his mace your direction, he's down again. If you're familiar with other Hollow Knight speedruns, you may know that you actually don't have to finish this fight because there's a secret exit on the left side of the arena. But we actually want to get the city crest that he drops as well as get the geo out of the chest because again, geo routing is very tight in 106. Also, he has a percentage. Well, that too. <laughs> that too. Yeah. <laughs> Those um, pesky percents. Yeah, and since we do need a lot of essence in this category, um, we will be fighting like the harder versions of a lot of these bosses, and that includes him too. Ah, uh, yes. We delete him so fast in 106, it's easy to forget. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll be playing the torch game up here. Can we get the torch I game? No. Uh, there is, I think it's like a pixel perfect spot there where you can swing your nail and not break either one of the torches and you'll see most speedrunners go for that little trick. Um, entering into the mound here, the shaman is going to grant us our first spell. The vengeful spirit, aka the fireball, is going to allow us to do lots of things such as kill boulders and jump up places we weren't actually intended to go. Um, it's a little bit of a ways off. Once we get to Green Path, you'll see how because the fireball gives you a little bit of a pushback, it enables several skips that save some time in the early game. Uh, we're actually locked into this portion of the mound. The snail shaman needs our help with a little infestation and, you know, if we would just help a homie out and go over here and use our new spell that they gave us, uh, then they'll open the gate and let us free. So we're going to make our way through here as quickly as possible. Baldurs generally take four fireballs to kill and our vessel holds enough for three. So we actually want that little roller that split uh, in order to get more and have enough to kill it. Then we're going to pick up our uh, additional charm here, the soul catcher, which uh, we're also going to equip, even though it looks like we don't have room, but wait. If you just try hard enough and believe, you can wear more charms than it looks like for the low, low price of double damage. Um, I think- mm, There's a couple of- Oh, oh go sorry. ahead. Um, uh, there's a couple of reasons that I'm deciding to overcharm here. Even though I don't intend to use Fury uh, for the next two bosses that we normally would in a run because it is a little bit too dangerous for a marathon setting. Um, we're gonna be overcharming for a large portion of this run. Um, so I figured I may as well do it here. Um, normally, being overcharmed in Green Path is great because there's a little bit of a freeze whenever you get hit by enemies. Um, so being able to get into Fury in two hits instead of four is ideal. Um, also, if you want to go ahead and explain what I just did there <laughs> to that Balder, that innocent child. <laughs> yeah, so I mentioned earlier the Balders generally need four fireballs to kill, and you might be thinking, wait a minute, that wasn't four. Um, and that's because of a glitch that exists on this patch where your fireball kind of gets stuck at the edge of the screen and one fireball is capable of hitting the boulder multiple times. So the very particular way that Emre kind of woke up the boulder and then took a little bit of a step back before shooting the fireball gets it positioned exactly right to take advantage of that. And that's not a trick that you can do on current patch because fireballs just don't go to the edge of the screen anymore. Um, we're also headed up to our second fireball skip here, taking advantage of that little bit of pushback that I mentioned earlier. Oh, and unfortunately right. just barely misses it. And we have to go over here and talk to Eric. Oh no. Um, okay, Eric. hold on. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the room um, because I really don't want um, him to be right there. Yeah, every now and then the Squid just will not cooperate. And that's why people often get oh. mad at Eric. Like, oh, goodness. Yeah, that, that was not great. Um, <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, I just don't want to end up in Fury at Hornet. That's not ideal. Three health is okay. I should be fine. Um, luckily, there is a backup for every single one of the um, fireball skips. So if I do fail them, they're usually okay unless I walk off of a ledge. Yeah. There we go. Got the next one. For the first fireball skip, you can basically just go the intended path. For the second one, you can take Eric the Squit, as you saw, 
And for the third one, uh, those two husks that Emery uh, used to farm soul on actually get close enough to the edge that you can pogo them up there. And that has a, a multitude of names. Uh, Buddy Bounce is a popular one. All the alliterative ones are very popular. Uh, the double hit that Emery just got on the Moss Knight there is a trick that you can get. If you get him to jump backwards, the fireball will double hit. And that basically saves a little bit of soul farming up here as we make our way past Vengefly King. Uh, so sorry, Zoat. So, so sorry. 106 is the optimal max percent category because we do not save so we have no reason to. Um, we didn't mention it, but there is one thing that is technically optional that is required, and we do have to complete the Grim Troop DLC by defeating Nightmare King Grim. So that is required in the run. I will be doing that. Yeah, and as Emery mentioned earlier, uh, in a more competitive setting, you would be aiming to do Hornet in, in Fury, but uh, here we're just going to be working over Charmed, and the initial fireball actually skips Hornet's dialogue so that you get to the fight a lot quicker. Um, on 1221, the stagger cycle is five hits, so you can see M's really got her locked in a corner here. That was great. Um, um, actually, I had a glitch there where oh, did she, she can't stuck? jump. Yeah, I got the, the what do they call it, ground knit? Oh, uh, floor knit. <laughs> floor knit, yeah, Mithulu that's what around. it is. I thought yeah, you were I just hitting her that glitch. quick that you were getting the stagger. I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> perceptive enough to see the floor knit. Um, yeah. That can be our major glitch for the day as a treat. Okay, I hope that's all we get. <laughs> Um, and that actually seems to happen quite often when I'm on commentary, which is a little bit weird. Uh, <laughs> that, that also happened to Math when I was coming for him one time. But now that we've got our dash, we're going to be a lot speedier as we move around, and we're going to head down into the fungal wastes uh, in search of our mantis claw, uh, a.k.a. the uh, wall grab. And we're going to be doing a series of... Uh, tight movement and then a series of skips that will get us into the Mantis Village a little quicker than intended. Um, coming through this room can be a little bit... Oh, Charm Notch. Before we go get Claw, we're going to come over here and fight these Shroom Ogres. Uh, you see M is still over Charmed, but once we pick up the Charm Notch from this fight, uh, we won't be anymore. These guys actually have a pretty reliable kill with... Uh, Fireballs, since on this patch you can hit them both with fireballs, since the the uh, the fireball does go all the way to the edge of the screen. And having picked up that charm notch, we are no longer overcharmed, and we're so fully healed. <clears throat> uh, we will be back through here later, since there's a dream warrior off to the right. But for now, we're just going to make our way as fast as possible, high cloth by cloth, and head on down toward. Uh, e Pogo, which is uh, a skip that you'd see in many Hollow Knight runs. Uh, on 1221, you're actually able to pogo the explosion. There are current patch E Pogos, but they rely on pogoing on the Sporg or the, the thing that makes the explosion. So, that was a little early. Oh. I've been struggling with this trick a lot. Bear with me, chat. Um, this has always been like my personal demon. Uh, with running this game. Mind if I cut in for a great right, announcement? got it that time. Um, really quick. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, you can explain sure. this Thank after. You. We just reached $73,000 raised for Malala Fund, and we are just over halfway for Path of Pain for a total of $4,221. We are almost there in unlocking the incentive. Thank you so much for your contributions, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone. Nice. Um, Let's go, chat. A lot of the movement here in Mantis Village relies on manipulating the Mantis youth to do what you want. Uh, you saw one M came down. Uh, it's a very, very specific sequence to go over, uh, kill the lower Mantis, hit the lever, and then pogo up to where you get Mantis Claw. And then by luring the upper Mantis, you can actually get it to help you get early control by uh, knocking you out of the Mantis Claw cutscene. Um, 
In a lot of categories, this is where you would save quit back out, but in 106, we're actually gonna climb up here, stop to get a grub, and head on our way to the City of Tears. So, grubs have several items locked behind them, including two charms. And as mentioned earlier, charms are percent, so we're gonna have to save all of the grubs, as I'm sure we'd all want to anyway, in order to make sure that we get both of those charms. Uh, we picked up the city crust from False Knight, and so we're actually going to enter here into the front door of city. A lot of runs start on the right side because they shade skip in through a, a different entrance. Uh, but we're going to come in this way and make our way directly to Soul Sanctum. And a lot of the early game of 106 is sort of wandering through the game, well not wandering, running through the game, getting all of your movement abilities and spells, and then going back through and doing a little bit of cleanup when you are faster and more dangerous. I like the idea of um, the run being just like wandering through as though like you don't already have this pre-planned out. You're just so good at doing it on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> we just no, really, to find I have this no really idea what I'm run. doing, so. <laughs> Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. Don't listen to Colette. <laughs> that was our friend Quirrell chilling on the bench. Unfortunately, we don't have time to stay and hang out with him. But we're going to head here into the rafters, picking up another relic. And I guess I don't think we've really talked about relics too much, but basically there are some items in the game that are just in there in order for you to sell and have a uh, geo. Um... They're a secure form of Geo because although hopefully we won't see any deaths today, if you do die in Hollow Knight, your ghost keeps all of your money. And if you die before collecting your ghost, you lose all your money. So relics are something that's safe from that. And we'll head over here and sell to Lem to uh, get some more Geo. I then we're going to head... Oh, go ahead. I assume that it's already been mentioned, but the geo routing in this route is actually very tight. So picking up that specific thing to sell for geo is actually like a serious part of the route. Yeah. Uh, we just saw a really nice lever skip that helped us avoid those DLC rooms on the left side there. And that's another one of the things that makes 1221 uh, kind of a really good patch for speedrunning because it saves so much time to be able to skip those rooms uh, by just hitting that lever through the floor. And as we head up here, you're going to see it again. And this is going to allow us to skip the first Soul Warrior, aka Norman 1. Uh, that used to actually be in the 106 route, although it was after the Soul Master. But after some rerouting, we no longer need the Geo that he drops. And so we're able to skip them all together. Um, we also have to make sure not to go back into his room later because that can actually cause a soft lock. Yes, and that was one of the best reasons to route him out because the, the route that was used actually was like, you, you just were rolling the dice of whether it was going to be a soft lock or not. Um, that, the room that I just went through, yeah. by the way, is <laughs> Hack Room. <laughs> um, they were very, very nice for a marathon run, I gotta say. Yeah, that was actually yeah, incredibly that was beautiful. Can we get some applause for the Soul Warriors behaving? Yeah. <laughs> and here in this next room is the Soul Master fight. This is another one that in a non-marathon setting would be done under Fury. And because of that is the place where a lot of runs come to die. Because everything in Soul Sanctum likes to teleport directly into your path. And some of them also like to shoot fireballs at you. So Soul Master does both of those things and can be quite a pest if he goes just teleports directly where you were dashing. Um, but on the flip side, the Fury fight is so fast that a lot of times he doesn't have a chance to do that because he's already dead. Um, but to be marathon safe, this fight is still going pretty quickly, even though we're not in Fury. And we've defeated Soul Master. Or have we? Yeah, imagine <laughs> that fight you beat me faster, <laughs> though. Like, that was still really quick. I think this is one of the first great debates in every casual player's run where you just have a moment of victory and then you just, oh no, there's phase two. So an, uh, an important thing about the dives in this phase is actually that his first dive doesn't have a hitbox. Um, and 
so that allows Emery to position for the hits that she's going to get in. Yeah, we, we're always going to dodge the first one. It's that way for every iteration of Soul Master, including the upgraded version. Um, if we get to see Pantheon Apollo Nest, I'm also going to be dodging the first dodge there. Uh, I really hope that y'all get to hit that incentive, by the way, is fantastic. We still have tons of time. Yeah, and here we pick up the Desolate Dive. Um, and picking this up also refills all of our soul. The dive is used to break floors as well as do damage. And when you use it uh, offensively, one of the great things about it is that it also gives a lot of invincibility frames. So you can see it used just for dodging in certain situations, uh, but here we're gonna use it to make our way out of the sanctum. There's uh, another relic that we're gonna grab here, as well as a grub that we hopefully will be able to get a fake dive, uh, a dive that breaks the floor, but we don't go through. Since oh. we didn't, we'll get to see uh, M go around for the grub. It is also possible to come and get it later uh, after Soul Tyrant, but in most cases, runners will get it before they leave Sanctum the first time. Yeah, awesome. better to do it now than to forget. I didn't take my jump input. It looked like I had a weird wall cling storage there. Uh, wall cling storage, by the way, is something that we should probably talk about. Um, so it's it's useful in a lot of places on this patch, um, but sometimes you get it accidentally like that and it can throw off your whole groove. Um, I think you've already seen me do it once through a gate earlier and you like preserve your dash momentum uh, as you're going through the gate. So that's part of why that's such a good movement tech. Yeah, in some cases, it, it th the rules around wall plank storage are actually a little bit complicated. You have to be able to make the same movement through the same space with your existing equipment. Uh, but if you throw that requirement out the window, like wall plank storage can, can be used in some pretty wild ways. Um, we're going to... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I just want I'm ready to have two more Geo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm about to get a lot more Geo, so I'm going to disappoint. Sorry. Correct. Sorry, go ahead, Colette. Uh, we're going to head out of Sanctum here. We're going to purchase this bench, duck out of the door just quickly to skip the animation, and change out our charms. And this is going to be our bench for the foreseeable future. We have a, a long trip through Crystal Peak before we're going to save quit back to that bench. So we cannot sit down anywhere uh, during the next segments. It's also really important that um, Emre not take too much damage because dying will, of course, send us all the way back to that bench. Yes. And healing is possible, but healing is slow, so speedrunners never want to heal. But we will be hopefully playing it safe here since we're, we're marathon setting. And actually, hopefully we'll just, everything will be easy and we won't have to play it safe because it's free. Um, yeah, I'll just play perfectly. No big deal. Yeah, yeah, easy. Hit all the right buttons at the right easy. times and make sure that your computer doesn't do anything wrong. Um, this is our first example of what is known as the look down or the scurry look down. And it basically makes the bell come out of the ground faster for reasons. Uh, yeah, <laughs> reasons. Basically those two um, animations are tied together. So when the knight looks back up, it assumes that the bell animation is done. Yeah, it's extremely weird and uh, it saves quite a bit of time because if you don't do it, the bell is surprisingly slow. Um, we just passed one of the entrances to Crystal Peak. That one is not accessible to us because we don't have the lantern, uh, but our access is going to be with the dive that we picked up. Um, in, in the vanilla game, you can access either of those routes, but the one has a toll that you cannot interact with in the dark, so you cannot, uh, like, shortcut your way in there. And here we're passing Myla. Hi, Myla. My sweet princess. <laughs> we never get to hear her sing because we already have dive. Um, luckily, she was not an incentive for this event, so we're not going to have to murder her either. Let's go, Myla lovers. <laughs> we win by default. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Crystal Peak is another area that's very, very full of cycles. So some of these rooms, if you if you hesitate or miss even one thing, it can mess up the cycle for the whole rest of the room. 
uh, in other cases, like things are a little bit more lenient, uh, but in most cases there's a, oh, a setup. Yeah, I'm getting this. I will, I will reset for this until I get it. By the way, <laughs> there is there is a setup uh, in most of the rooms to take advantage of the cycles, and what we're trying to do here is take a nice, take advantage nice. of the axe that that miner throws to do a pogo, and we call that trick pog axe. Not because it's a pog trick by axe to you, but because it is a literal axe pogo. Um, so the reason that it's called that is because we we didn't know how how to set it up for a long time. It was just like something people would go for on a dead run to try to save a little bit of time and meme. Um, but we managed to find a consistent setup for it. So yeah. it's really neat whenever that sort of thing happens in a yeah. speed run. So I, I guess I could say that it's also a pog axe trick, but you know, technically <laughs> it's an axe pogo. Uh, we just picked up yeah. Sly's shopkeeper key there in that little alcove, which is one of the two main reasons behind this trip to Crystal Peak. Uh, we saved Sly earlier when we were at Salubra Earth. No, wait. We're headed to slave Sly after this. I'm sorry, getting my categories mixed up. Um, and he has some items for sale right off the bat, but the rest of his items are locked behind that key. The other reason that we're here now is in order to get Crystal Dash. And as we come through here, there are a couple different methods to come through. Uh, there's a damage tank version and a no damage version. Categories that save quit out of Crystal Heart generally do the damage tank version as it's a little bit faster. But since 106 has so much left to do, also underplat, woo. Uh, 106 woo. has so much woo. left to do after this, we do the uh, no damage version so that we keep our health for later areas. And Crystal Dash is going to allow us to get to those areas very, very quickly uh, and over very vast distances. Um, the, the Crystal Dash becomes faster anytime you're doing more than four dashes. So there are a lot of places where it has been uh, found, little places where you can grab or little narrow spots you can get through that enable Crystal Dashing instead of regular dashing. There's several more grubs for us to pick up here in Crystal Peak. Oh, that guy's really rude. Mind if I cut in for um, an exciting announcement? Awesome. Yes. Thanks. So we actually just sped right past $74,000 raised from Malala Fund. We are over halfway to 75 k and we are so, so close to fulfilling Path of Pain. We are less than $700 away from the 6 k unlock. Thank you everybody for your donations and let's see that path of pain. Nice job, everyone. Nice. Nice. Uh, those we went through, a okay, go ahead. Oh yeah, uh, those crushers um, are terrifying, but they're yet another example of the uh, many, many cycles in, uh, in this area. Yes. Uh, the dark room is, I guess, not exactly a cycle, but you treat it somewhat like a cycle. It can be very scary. I remember when I started playing saying, I will never do a dark room. But once you <laughs> know the room and you understand where the enemies are, even though you can't see it, it's, I promise you guys, it's not that bad. It just, it looks scary. Um, Emery did a little skip there by avoiding those platforms to the right. You can pogo up the crystals there. And then we're going to save the grub before heading on over to get our Descending Dark. This is the, the void upgrade of the <clears throat> Desolate Dive, and it's basically a much more powerful version. And basically, we kill another snail <laughs> and <laughs> eat its power. Yeah, and some categories uh, are able to do a, a form of early control there. But unfortunately, in 106, because we get here so early, we don't have any of those options, uh, such as like Dash Slash. And in current patch, you can actually lure an enemy up there to hit you out of it, but the enemies are very much harder to get up there on 1221. Um, intentionally... Yeah, like, oh, go ahead. Um, the, the crystal bug um, that was next to me whenever I did the pogo skip, in current patch, it doesn't like to eat itself into spikes, but on this patch, it does. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I wish that it worked. <laughs> and we intentionally fell down into that vast crevasse 
uh, to come down here into the resting grounds. And this is where we're going to get our dream nail. And we also fell intentionally into that vast crevasse because it's, it's a loadless time save. A lot of the things that we see here are loadless time saves. Um, if you're interested in running Hollow Knight on PC, but you think maybe that your PC isn't the best, it's actually okay because the loadless timer allows everything where you're not in control. So the loads in between screens and stuff like that to not be counted. Um, and so speaking of the loadless timer, um, I actually have mine running right now so that I can see my timer start moving again for a skip that I'm going to do right here. Yeah, That's we've picked up the dream now and we're going to reappear in the Sears house or our way. Oh, uh, oh. My finger slips off of the button. Oh. So <laughs> I Darn. had the C-Dosh. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get to see that same skip in a slightly different form later on in the run. Yes. Uh, but basically it allows you to leave the Sears house before you've even stood up by taking a form of early control uh, just as the cutscene ends. Yeah, it's very, very fun to watch too. I'm not going to spoil the animation for you, but we'll, we'll look for it when we do it next time. Yeah. Heading down here into the crypts, there's a few things to take care of. The the grub for one, and then we're also going to be headed to the far left to pick up a charm. Um, the Soul Eater is a charm that's very powerful, but because it takes so many notches, it's one that unfortunately isn't used throughout a lot of the run, but we will get to see it in action uh, much later on once we get to the Coliseum. Um, we'll also be back in this area when we have to do the flower quest, and that's why Em already opened up the ceiling there. And then we're going to head our way to the left on our way to take, I don't know if this is necessarily a shortcut, but in, in many cases you would not necessarily go this way, you'd probably take the stag out of resting grounds. But for 106, it's faster to uh, go this way because we want to open this lever so that we can enter this room later from the top. Um, that lever controls a block in the ceiling. Um, and we're actually right next to it earlier, but I didn't think to point it out then. Zooming our way across Blue Lake here, we're going to stop by and see Salubra, AKA Sally, uh, the vivacious charm seller. Um, and we've got a couple purchases to make here. Shaman Stone, because it's phenomenal, and also because it gives us five charms, which is what it takes for her to sell us that charm notch. Um, and then we'll head over here to Free Sly so that we can go purchase the elegant key from him. And you saw Gru's mom sleeping up there. She will remain sleeping because 106 gets the Gru's mom percentage from the Coliseum. Uh, the Gru's mom in Crossroads stays sleeping for the entire run, even though it means we have to go uh, kind of around her arena in a flower quest. I really the best timeline. Like to think that after the game is over, Gru's mom gets to live happily ever after as a result of that. <laughs> And her children get to hit other people trying to fall down crossroads. <laughs> yeah. Um, we did pass the crossroads uh, tram there, uh, which also is another connection to resting ground, but that tram does not get any use in the speed run. We will be using the lower tram later on, um, as that is the only way to access certain parts of the map. I actually have some news oh. for our runner, Emre. We just reached our incentive for Path of Pain. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Nice. Thank you Let's everyone go. for your kind donations and contributions to Malala Fund and showing our runners and commentators immense support. Thank you, thank you. We will see Path of Pain done during this run. And to update everybody, we just went past $75,000 raised for Malala Fund. And we are on our way to our milestone of $77,777.77 to see Pantheon of Hollowness. So be sure to get those donations rolling in if you want to see an extra bonus game. So we finally took advantage of that bench we sat on all those a uh, long time ago. And here we are now fighting Soul Warrior 2, AKA Norman 2. Uh, lots of community nicknames 
uh, that some of the bosses and enemies have, and I'm I'm trying to remember also their real names so that non um, yeah non meme people know who I'm talking about. Uh, but that that was kind of unlucky. Is uh, um, oh the ghost. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was trying to stall out for a ghost, and it was probably like frames from spawning another one. It's fine. Yeah. That's um, another... There is a way to do early control there um, that is not possible on later patches. They put an invisible wall, unfortunately, um, but it's okay. There's one other early control that I might get to go for. Yeah, and the ability that we picked up there was the Shade Soul. It's the void upgrade of the Fireball. And that's a really great timing because now we're going to head up here and fight Soul Tyrant, the upgraded version of Soul Master. And as you could see there, like the, the damage is increased, especially because we have on Shaman Stone. With Shaman Stone, the Shade Soul is gonna be doing 40 damage in a single hit. And when double hits are able to be set up, uh, then it's gonna be doing 80. And double hits happen when you're a particular distance from the enemy and they're moving away from you, generally speaking. Uh, so they are something that can be controlled and uh, used to your advantage. The Soul Tyrant can be a bit of a pain to fight without wings, but we don't want to have to come back to Soul Sanctum later, and we need this essence uh, pretty quickly here because one of the final movement pieces that 106 needs to pick up is the Dream Nail, or sorry, the Dream Gate, which is the first upgrade for the Dream Nail. Uh, and basically lets you leave a little spot that you can teleport to. The magic number of essence that we need for that is 900, and 300 of it is going to come from this Soul Tyrant fight. So, M's trying to get him set up for uh, doubles, and we're gonna try to get through the first phase as quickly as possible and on to the second. So, the second is closer to uh, the Soul Master fight, and once he's done diving, we're gonna hope for a floor spawn so that we can spam the Dark on. Um, in 1221, you are able to literally spam D Dark if you're given the opportunity to, uh, because the iframes don't uh, disappear the same way that they do on current patch. But he actually spawned in the air there, which is rude, but got it taken care of. That's all right. I had to play a little bit safe. I didn't want to get down to one health because that is a very long fight uh, to die at the very end of. Yeah, but very nicely done. Yeah, that was that was pretty decent for uh, Soul, Soul Tyrant, excuse me. Um, Soul Tyrant can be quite a bully. As you can see, he teleports a lot, but we did get uh, decently lucky there. I believe your splits call him RNG Tyrant, so... Yes. <laughs> Relatively polite. <laughs> they sure do. Yeah, and we're taking advantage again of the bench that we purchased earlier. Uh, and we're going to head down into the waterways. Uh, a little bit earlier when we were <clears throat> headed out of Sanctum and headed toward the city storerooms, we stopped in a little alcove and picked up a key. And we're going to put that simple key to use coming up here after another trip to Lem. Um, in 106, you basically stop and sell to Lem anytime you're near him. And even though it's not always a huge amount of money, it's usually just on time for when you need it. Yeah, the, the geo routing being tight is not just about, about the amount of geo that you pick up, it's about when you get it and when you need it as well. Yeah, so heading here into waterways, we're going to open up the bench, which is behind a dive floor, and sit on the bench in order to set our save point there before getting uh, headed down to get the charm that is kind of the hallmark of 106 in many ways. Um, flukes are broken in different ways on different patches, and in 106, they allow us to do um, a, a lot of kind of little janky things because of the way that they interact with uh, background objects or because of the way that they don't interact with background objects. Um, one example is that they don't knock bosses out of stagger. Oh, uh, M oh, no. missed the quick kill for Fluke Marm. And that is one that requires... Um, okay, I actually don't know what to do here if this happens. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, Reset the room, question mark? 
Can you reset the room? I mean, it's still it'll still wake up. Oh it'll, no! It'll it'll stop the flukes, the baby flukes for a minute. <gasps> um, okay, got the, it. There we go. The quick kill for fluke mom requires you to be okay. Oh, <gasps> that's you know what? That's fine. I <laughs> um I don't understand how I I missed it, but you know what? We're okay because yeah. she's dead. I think. <laughs> No, she's dead. Um, we just have to run back down and grab our, grab our soul, grab our money, and grab her charm. Um, yeah, um, that's a little bit precise. Not super precise. Um, it is a little bit embarrassing to miss it because it's that not precise. But um, yeah, I, I was trying to line up in a specific spot on the floor and uh, miss. Yeah, it requires you basically to be lined up in the center of Fluke Marm, and if you're off to either side, then you go down the slope of her body. Um, yeah. So on the scale of deaths but, that that we could have taken, that was one of the less impactful ones, fortunately. So. Yeah, this whole segment coming up though is very uh, specific how I need to approach it. Uh, it's probably one of the segments that I'm most scared of. Okay, never mind. I'm. Um, I am going to go take the bench again because, as I was saying, I am very nervous about this segment. Yeah, there are um, a lot of dangerous things in this segment and some intentional damage tanks as well. Um, and also very precise uh, movement and very precise fighting, uh, starting with the Dung Defender fight, which is a very specific cycle. Um, doesn't quite kill him instantly, but it, it's... It's pretty close to instant. Um, Dung Defender, for those who don't know, you can actually knock out of the ground with dive. So we start by knocking him out of the ground, then a Dream Null to get soul, a cycle of flukes and nail, more nail, more Dream Nail, more flukes, and poof. And an essence drop, let's go. Nice, nice. essence pog. Um, and we're also uh, ending the fight with a cast of soul, which is important because there's a breakable floor that we need to open right next to the arena here. Getting random essence drops like that is actually really nice because that's going to save me time later. Um, because so we're going to get an ability uh, that uses essence and we're going to need to make up some of that essence from things called dream trees. Um, and that's one less essence I'm not going to need to grab. Oh, no. So there is a way uh, on the interior to access this, but that little spike tunnel saves a little bit of time. And then coming up here, we're going to need to be a little bit quiet so that M can hear her visual cue in the next room. Her um, audio cue. Um, yeah. Our, <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, hearing yeah I need to hear my visual. No, <laughs> yeah. Colette was right. <laughs> All right. Sorry, sorry, my bad, my bad. Um, I am going to be a huge coward, though, because for marathon safety, this is really consistent skips. But um, if I were to mess up too much, um, this could be run ending. Okay, uh, second acid skip coming up. All right, got it. Nice. Nice. And the those both may look very intimidating, and they certainly are to start out with, but like M said, they are mostly consistent. Um, and then I like this, how that's the one I failed. <laughs> the third one is considered <laughs> uh, the easiest one to get up to the grub because you can see everything that you're doing. Um, on the first skip, you basically can't see where you're starting, and on the second skip, you can't see where you're ending, which is why M was listening for the sound of hitting the platform. Uh, this is a form of early control that works if the Horumps cooperate, and they did. Um, generally, it can be consistent, but if they bump into each other, they can change each other's trajectories, and I wasn't sure if it was going to come properly over, but thankfully it did. Um, we're going to leave Isma's Grove and head down into Ancient Basin, and there's going to be another opportunity where things can just go wrong very quickly in the hallway. Uh, ideally, the Ravas are not in your way and you can get a clean sea dash through the entire room, but sometimes with RNG, they'll be right in the worst place. Thankfully, we got through there fairly cleanly. Mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna head down to another bench that we have to purchase. Um, 
a lot of, uh, some of the benches in Hollow Knight are free. We've seen a handful of them, but a lot of them also have a fee. So that's one of the things that we currently uh, are watching with our geo count. And after this section, we're also going to be purchasing um, a stag to get out of the basin. Um, headed over here to the left, is uh, where we're going to be fighting Broken Vessel and the dream version Lost Kin. And it goes through a room that is partly cycle-based and partly RNG-based as far as whether you're able to get cleanly through these giant Molarchs. Um, um, an example of the cycle is how I grabbed the wall there is the reason that I got hit there. That one is supposed to be consistent. Um, I just messed up the movement a little bit. Yeah. yeah, and there is another simple key uh, in this room down uh, in the bottom, but we've used the only simple key that we need to in this room. So we're just gonna make our way through, filling up on soul so that we have plenty of uh, magic before the fight. And then we're gonna go and do a little shortcut here. Nice, that's the basin that's jump. The... You... Trans dash, <laughs> yes, actually. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, trans dash basically, um, it can be used in a lot of places. We used to call it base and jump. Um, I'm a boomer. <laughs> it's okay, me too. Um, but yeah, you basically transfer your, your dash uh, momentum into extra jump height. Um, here in Broken Vessel is another example of just putting flukes on them. And you can see that when, whenever they miss, there'll be some flopping around, and Emma's really getting close enough so that the entire cast is just basically instantly absorbed. Um, yeah. And the fight's over pretty quickly. And that word absorbed is actually uh, really important to the way that flukes work. They don't hit enemies, they're absorbed, and that's why they don't interact in normal ways with things, such as br not breaking stagger. Yep. And yeah, exactly. And for the dream version Lost Kin, we're going to be looking to do basically the same thing, especially during the stagger. Lost Kin does not have a hitbox, so we can basically stand right inside and unload those flukes. And the ghosts that are spawned are basically perfect for farming soul. And uh, as we get through the fight here, wow. They're, they also can be used if you uh, damage tank your way through the fight appropriately to do a little bit of a quick exit from this fight, but it's only faster if you're already at low health at the end of the fight. Yeah, also I, I kind of got unlucky with where that last one spawned and it landed in the flukes. That's just the thing that can happen. It only saves like, what, two seconds? So it's not a huge deal. Also, yeah. I also want to point out that that, uh, that fight doesn't normally go like that. That was a fluke. <laughs> uh, okay, kick her out. <laughs> uh, and that fight was worth 400 of the essence that we're trying to collect. And now we stop by here afterwards to pick up the Monarch Wings, which is the double jump of Hollow Knight. I've actually got a very um, special donation here uh, from Kazeron saying, Ooh. stoked to see 106 being featured on GDQ stage. I'm super proud of you, Emre. Love you. Less than three for $100. Thank I you. love you too. Thank you so Aww. much for your donation. Aww. That that is my Aww. my partner Kizaron. Oh, by that's the way. so sweet. Do we have another uh, some time for another donation? Yeah, now would be a fun. Awesome. Time. We have a fifty dollar donation from Corby May saying, "Quote number one hundred twenty six. I'll kill anyone for charity." Emre. Please don't kill Myla. Sad face. <laughs> Good luck to one of my closest friends in speedrunning. Less than three. Um, you can read a couple more if you want. We're just going to head over here and purchase this uh, stag station, so it's just going to be a little bit of a long Excellent. trip. Excellent. Yeah, we're okay, just running awesome. some errands. Thanks Go so ahead. much. We have a $60 donation from a very generous donator saying, Save the Nailsmith, which, by the way, the, war, uh, the bid war is still open. And let me just check here that save is actually winning at $304 and kill is at $286. So we're we're looking like we're we're saving uh, the nailsmith. Emre, do you have a, a preference oh, whether to so save or kill? 
I don't. Honestly, like if this run goes well, um, Hollow Knight, you know, is is a load based game. So I will almost definitely be super under my estimate. Um, so no matter if save or kill wins, I have a surprise plan. We love surprises. Get excited, chat. I will unapologetically advocate for saving the Nailsmith. Ronnie <laughs> Joe deserves to find love. Um, that's what that's what we call the Nailsmith, by the way, Ronnie Joe. He tells you his name. When we go there, you'll be able to hear him say, "Hello, I'm Ronnie Joe." Trust me. Ah, this, this is Ron Joe this isn't made up at all. This is true lore. <laughs> Um, we're gonna do a little gauntlet here for another charm before we head over to fight the failed champ. This is the glowing womb charm, and if you are so bold as to put it on, it will sip all of your magic away in exchange for little exploding friends that will um, attack all of your enemies. But basically, Except in limited situations, it's a very tough charm to actually like feel very happy with because you run out of magic for other things um, because they're just constantly using it. Um, and managed to get full soul before coming up here so we don't have to worry about the little maggot baby friends. And we're going to head into the failed champ fight, which the first phase of this is uh, a little bit of a challenge. Um, because he's just so quick, he does double damage, but we are going to take advantage again of the D-Dark iframes <clears throat> to uh, ooh, get inside and ooh. do as much damage as possible. I see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to make it a little bit spicier. That's just an example what? of how like easily and quickly things can go badly in, in this fight because the double damage just catches you off guard. But each dagger allows you the chance to recover. And here we see the one, two, two, one dives in all their glory. You just chain them together and the phase is over. So we're gonna do that one more again and the fight will be over just about. Um, you do have to quote unquote defeat him um, down below. I'm sure there are people who have forgotten that fact or maybe not known that fact and uh, possibly jumped off without finishing things. And uh, that would be sad. Um, but in 106, all it takes is a single Shade Soul since we have a Shaman on and we can immediately leave and cut that scene a little bit short. Uh, Those rocks were out for blood. They <laughs> really were. That was so unlucky. <laughs> um, the, the, the failed champ gives 300 essence, so we now have enough essence to go and visit the seer and get the dream gate. And dream gating is going to play hugely in all of our routing going forward. Um, basically, you'll be able to put the gate down anywhere you like, and for the cost of one essence, teleport back to it at any time. Does laying down the gate cost essence, or is it just teleporting back? It's just teleporting yeah. back. Okay. So you can, you can change your mind about where you want to place it as many times as you want. And um, the random drops from enemies are basically kind of intended to replace the essence that you use while dream gating. And dream gating will actually increase very, very slightly the very low percentage chance of an enemy dropping a random essence. Um, but we do we do use gates faster than that's able to replenish it in 106, which is why, as Emre mentioned earlier, there's uh, a section where we stop to pick up a few extra from a dream tree. Um, other than that, the the whispering roots are not really routed in because we get enough essence from the bosses that we fight. Um, headed out of here, we're going to. Uh, head back to Dirtmouth. And uh, there are a few more things that we're going to be picking up in this area, well, the, the starting area. When we head back through King's Pass, we're going to find our way up to Howling Cliffs, um, sitting down in Dirtmouth again to set our save point. And uh, we're gonna go collect uh, the first of our nail arts. Um, Oil painting. 
Wait, that's not right. <laughs> huh? No. No, not yet. Um, the, the, the route to Howling Cliffs is one that if you were diligent at exploring, maybe you discovered in your casual before you could actually go up here. And then hopefully you remembered once you got your claw because it opens up a whole new area. Um, and <clears throat> one of the three nail masters makes his home up here. Um, Helen Cliffs can also be entered via the Stagna Stag, but we don't worry about getting the Stagna Stag, so we'll actually be entering that as well shortly using uh, an enemy pogo skip. Uh, this Those is the Nail gone. Master Motto, and he is going to teach us the Cyclone Slash. And the Cyclone Slash is very good for farming soul, and it also can be used uh, in place of inventory Get drops so for faster Bobby. falling speed. Uh, the way the two of them work uh, is a little bit different. Cyclone actually speeds you up, whereas inventory drops uncap your fall speed. So uh, the way I understand it is that cyclones are better for short drops, where inventory drops are better for longer drops. Uh, also, by Gorb. Yeah, that was a boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, was something. So I've heard. <laughs> yeah, um, a little bit of help to pogo up to the stag nest, and we're, oh, also another good thing Cyclone Slash is good for is uh, movement storage. This neat just, trick. Just a little, just a little drifty drift. <laughs> we love floating. <laughs> yeah, that that is a minor glitch, by the way. It is not major. Uh, the difference between minor and major in Hollow Knight is if I were invisible and I did that, it would be major, and that's it. That's the difference. Yeah. Uh, as we collect Gorb's essence there, you'll also maybe notice that Emery did a little trick called a Dream Nail Cancel, which lets her move during the collection animation, and we just need to make sure that we don't leave the room before the essence is collected. And we're going to head down here to do Joni's Dark Room. Uh, this is another dark room that can look very scary, especially if you know what the inside of this looks like, which is full of spikes and also full of enemies. Uh, but if you know the way through, there are some consistent strats. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. And there are some safety strats. Um, Basically, you just need to remember where the platforms are, and in a lot of cases, if you keep moving fast enough, you'll be out of the way before the enemies can spawn. And we'll find our way picking up Joni's Blessing here. Uh, this is one of the Lifeblood charms, and in the run, they're basically only used at one point, which is at the very end of the run. And then we'll be leaving via the Dream Gate that we placed down outside. Oh. These enemy positions are not great right now. Uh, so another thing that's different between this patch and current patch is current patch has consistent enemy positions, and this patch has usually like two different options that an enemy can spawn in. And uh, I kind of have to just react to a lot of those in the run. This little cave here holds the Grim Lantern, and what we're doing here is activating the Grim Troop content. Uh, using Cyclone again to skip a little bit of the animation there. Otherwise, we'd have had to uh, stand still and listen to their little intro theme song for a minute. But we're just going to dash out, head over here to pick up this relic, and then head back down into Green Path. Um, the first time we were in Green Path, we didn't really come this way because we'll be coming. We, were, we know that we're going to be coming back through here now. Um, and it's faster this way. So we're going to take a moment to kill these boulders. Uh, again, with the flukes doing some serious damage and pick up the boulder shell charm. <clears throat> we did not at any point buy the green path stag and we're not going to now either. We're going to be using dream gate to uh, maneuver our way through here and uh, we're going to place that down once we get closer to where we fought Hornet. Um, on the way down there, we've got another grub to pick up, and then we're going to be placing a dream gate before going to pick up um, another so, charm. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying rips out, because we just oh. passed the skull. Oh, the skull. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's more of a sorry, not sorry. Yeah, kind of. Poor Zolt. 
no Funny story. one misses them. <laughs> Funny story about my casual playthrough. I uh, I made it to Green Path. I saved Zote and I hated him so much that I actually reset the game and started over and left him there. And I didn't know he would actually die yet. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have some time for some donations? Yeah, go ahead. Speaking of saving people, uh, we have a $25 donation from a pig dreamer saying violence should only be used in self-defense or how can we call ourselves heroes if we take the lives of the innocent? This donation goes towards saving the nailsmith and saving the grubs as best you can. Thank you for your contribution. And we have a $100 donation from Noodles Yes saying, Hi Emre, so excited to see Hollow Knight being run at a GDQ event. Now murder that nailsmith. <laughs> and just to give everybody an update on our bid war to save or kill Nailsmith, Kill is actually now in the lead at $586. <gasps> and save is at 304 So if you want to save the Nailsmith, you got to catch up. Oh, please, and you guys. <laughs> I just want to stress how neutral I am on this. <laughs> this is not and like to my give an life. update on the grand total for our charity event, we raised $76,000 for Malala Fund. Thank you so much, everybody, for your contributions. We are almost at $77,777.77 milestone to unlock Pantheon of Hollow Nest. If you want to see a bonus run from Emre, please get your donations in. My goodness, we're so close. Yeah, everybody, thank you so much for all the donations so far. Um, we just picked up the Grimchild charm uh, from Grim, the Troop Master, and we're going to head back. Oh, well, first, we're going to head to the storerooms. Um, the Grimchild allows us to collect the flames that are scattered throughout the map, and the flames always spawn in the same location, so we don't need to actually check our maps or look around for them. We know where they are, and we route them in. Um, a lot of the 106 routing is based on what level of Grimkin we need to fight and where they're located. So we're going to take care of that one and then ride this elevator up to collect one of our vessel fragments. Um, so far, we still have the same base level of health and soul as we started the game with, but we will eventually be collecting four additional masks and three uh, extra soul vessels. And this is a piece of one of the vessels. The whole 106 run stays uh, fairly low health and low power. Um, just because of the way that the, like, some of the fragments are located at places we just don't go until very late in the game. And as far as nail upgrades, most of the run is done with zero nail upgrades for a few reasons. Uh, there are enemies that scale with your nail, for one thing, and for another, uh, the ore is also one of those items that is just placed in later game areas. Um, um, so one thing uh, is that you can um, you can quit out uh, when you pick up uh, fragments, but you don't want to do that when you actually pick up uh, enough fragments to form a full item, because you don't actually get the item until after the animation is finished. So Emery sat through that entire animation very deliberately. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, there's only a handful that we actually quit out on. They're mostly mass shards. I think they're actually all mass shards. Um, not vessel fragments, for whatever reason. Just routing worked out that way, I guess. Um, the map shards are in more like uh, remote areas. Right here, I'm gonna do a trick. Um, back. Okay, I didn't get it. Uh, there's like a sketchy grab. So I want to introduce Shio. Shio is the artist, nail master. He has given up the path of violence to pursue his artistic career. And uh, he is the the lover or the future lover of the nails the nailsmith. If we decide to save him, um, yeah. Just think about the choice that you're making, or you know, if you hate love. I know it sounds like I'm very pro save right now, but <laughs> so, I don't so know. Now, Some people hate love. <laughs> so now we just learned oil painting, right? That's yeah. Yes. 
uh, our second <laughs> nail art from Shio, who is definitely a homie, um, is the Great Slash. Uh, and the Great Slash is got like a big thick hitbox. In certain circumstances, it can do two hits at once because it's hitbox, uh, because of the way its hitbox is shaped. And then we're going to head over here to pick up the Thorns of Agony charm. Um, and all these uh, green path platforming little gauntlets uh, are kind of a little bit more difficult in some ways than others because when you have a gauntlet that's full of spikes, you can pogo the spikes in Hollow Knight, but thorns are not pogoable. Thorns will only poke you in places you don't want to be poked. So... It makes total sense because you can pogo spikes in real life, but you can't pogo thorns, so... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a Grimkin oh, here, and we're going to lure it to the end um, of the room, since that's the way we're moving, and... He managed to dodge out of a couple fireballs there, so... Yeah, uh, he was, like, in the ceiling. I've never seen him up there. Um, but sure, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's apparently a spot he can spawn. Very annoying enemies, especially because they laugh at you the whole time. Yeah, um, it's so hurtful. <laughs> it's, like, very, very rude. But we got him taken care of. We grabbed that little acid grub over there. And now we're going to head up and get this grub that is chilling with Cornifer. Um, and we've passed Cornifer several times throughout the run. If you play casually, you definitely know who Cornifer is. But for anybody who is unfamiliar, he is the NPC that will give you maps. And uh, in the speedrun, we don't need any maps. Maps are not a percent. So we never talk to Cornifer although the compass charm that his wife Azelda sells is a percent, so we will see her at the very end of the run uh, during our shopping trip. Taking advantage of Crystal Heart to re-enter oh. Crystal Peaks from the side, that is a It ate my jump, jump input. Oh. <laughs> Hollow Knight oh is uh, a wonderful game. Hollow yeah, Knight is sure not is. always a well input handling game, um, particularly on some of the older patches. Uh, it is the downside that is paid for uh, being able to take advantage of some of the small uh, <laughs> minor glitches and fun things. Okay, but so that's how you... that's supposed to look. <laughs> <laughs> um, now down here, we're going to be saving a grub. Oh, nice grub. Wait, are you a grub? You're not a grub. Um, <laughs> For me, I think this was my first Mimic, and I was not happy about that. But in the run, we do already know it's a Mimic. However, uh, it's a good source to farm soul for the next upcoming Grimkin, who's in this uh, this upper room here. Um, the Grimkin are fairly easy to deal with as long as you have magic and they don't dodge your magic. Um, two fireballs will, for the most part, take care of them. So that's why it's worth the time to take a moment and farm a little bit of soul before uh, encountering them. Uh, we've got another relic to pick up here and we're also gonna be farming soul off of this Glimback. And in a lot of cases, the enemies that we farm, the, if, we're, if we're bothering to kill an enemy, it's usually for two reasons, either to farm soul from or to farm geo from. Um, a little while ago, for example, when we were on the way to the Lake of Un, there's a guard there, and instead of ignoring him, we killed him for his geo. Uh, here in Crystal Peak, we're going to fight the Crystal Guardian, and he's not quite defeated. He's just angry, and he's going to jump up through the ceiling, but we're going to follow him and fight his enraged version, which does double damage, but happens to be guarding These a lasers. shard. Oh. are not great. Yeah, the, sh the lasers that come from the ceiling are complete RNG, and the positions that they uh, that they come out in sometimes can just very much uh, be inconvenient. Yeah, those, he, he like, laser, pun intended, targeted me, and I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to do some, some weenie stuff to kind of uh, make up for that health loss because we still have a lot more to do here and it's still very dangerous. The first time through Peak, we opened that uh, lever and gate that we just passed so that we could climb up that way right now. 
And we're going to once again uh, kill that enemy for soul. And then this is one of those very satisfying sea dashes I was talking about. By clinging at the very top edge uh, of that platform, you're able to go through most of that room just effortless, effortlessly. Um, and then we're gonna stop here to free a grub. Um, and then head out to do a little skip involving this uh, crystal hunter lets us get up to the top level level quickly and we're going to be climbing to the top of hollow nest's crown to pick up a pale ore um, even though the nail upgrades don't come until much later in the run the nail upgrades are uh, percentages and so we need to collect the ore as we're going along do we and have time for a quick donation sure Thanks. We have a $500 donation from the Yeti saying, Hey all, Yeti here. I have been tuned in all week watching amazing speedruns and I'm so proud of the amazing work being done at this event. It makes us especially grateful to be able to help out. A big shout out to Mikoto and Queenie for incredible tea designs. 100% of profits go directly to Malala Fund. That being said, we really like to see the Captain Toad treasure tracker bonus levels, don't you? Please put this $500 towards unlocking all those levels. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Yeti, for, for your generous donation. And just to update everybody, we are at $77,000 raised for Malala Fund. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions. But we still have a little bit more to go to unlock pa uh, Pantheon of Hollow Nest. And just a reminder that all incentives go towards that milestone. So you can select any incentive and it will go towards the, our milestone goal. Wow, nice. So close to the milestone, you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, we just upgraded the Grimchild. We got the three flames from the first uh, level one Grimkin, and now we're going to be moving on to the level two Grimkin. Um, they're a little bit beefier. They've got an additional move, but once again, as long as we approach them with a goodly amount of magic, they're pretty much uh, easy to deal with. And once we kill that Grimkin, we're going to gate back here to uh, Crystal Peak. We've got another charm to pick up in Deep Focus. And I think this is a charm that it sounds so good, but then it's just a little bit too slow to be appealing. Um, unless you're really, really going for that healing build and stacking it maybe with some charms that uh, complement it. Um, and that's not something that we talked about a lot because it's not a mechanic that's uh, taken advantage of in the speed run. But uh, for a more casual player, or maybe if you're doing the randomizer, a lot of the charms work together with each other to give additional uh, bonuses. Um, and Deep Focus is one example. Deep Focus makes it so that you heal two masks, but the healing time is slower. But if you wear quick focus with it, then it's back to your regular healing speed, but still heals at two minutes. So there's lots of little fun combinations like that. So what I just did there um, might seem kind of weird putting a dream gate at a bench. Um, I want to take a moment to shout out someone named Scruffy. Um, Scruffy is someone who like basically comes out of nowhere and reroutes all of our categories and just gets world records. And he is an absurdly good gamer. Um, so I'm actually showing off his new world record route today. Um, and the entire mid game is very scary, very dangerous, um, but it saves a lot of time. Uh, I ended up PBing by about three minutes whenever I switched over to his route. So it's a fantastic routing uh, concept. So you might not have ever seen this route of 106 if you have seen 106 before. Yeah, and here we're taking advantage of the liver that we hit earlier and the shortcut to go immediately from zero into this Grimkin fight. Um, there's a vessel, or a, a totem rather, behind that wall that Emery took advantage of to get soul. And now we're going to take the elevator down into the City of Tears. And this is our actually our first time really on the right side of City of Tears. So... I Sorry to cut in, but I have an exciting announcement. We reached our incentive, our milestone goal of $77,777.77 to unlock Pantheon of Hollow Nest. 
Great job, everybody. Thank you so much for your contributions to Malala Fun. We unlocked our bonus game. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, that'll really be fun to look forward to. Um, for those that don't know, it was talked about a little bit earlier, but the Pantheon of Hollow Nest is the boss rush of the game. Um, it is a current patch uh, area, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see Emery tackle that after the 106 run. We um, also have another uh, bid for for that, too, because of the fact that it's on current patch, we can use something called Custom Night, and Custom Night lets us use whatever skins we want, and we have a lot of great options. Um, that should probably be opening up pretty soon. Yeah, be sure to check those out. I am a huge Custom Night fan. Uh, the Hollow Knight community has a very healthy modding community and also a ton of amazing artists in it. And, uh, you know, Custom Night kind of highlights both of those things. Um, Emery did overcharm here, and that's so that she can have on both the Grim Child as well as Flukes. We're going to uh, fight a Grimkin on our way to Hornet 2 uh, here in Kingdom's Edge. And this one is one that is a little bit tricky because you have Flukes instead of the uh, the Shade Soul. And the, the, the way that you fight with Flukes is just very different from the way that you fight with Shade Soul. But if you can get a good solid Flukes on them, then it uh, it's over pretty quickly. And we're gonna head over here to fight Hornet. She is guarding the King's Brand, which will allow us down into the Abyss to get our Shade Cloak. And then our movement will finally be fully complete. Um, this is a fight that uh, can be a struggle, but with uh, Flukes on, the amount of damage that you can do can get it over pretty quickly. Uh, so you just have to be mindful of being overcharmed and uh, not face tank your way through the fight. There is a safety bench that Emma is not taking, but that's fine because we're gamers and we don't need it. All right. <laughs> um, Hornet, of course, is uh, basically our sister. Sorry, lore spoilers. Um, but she's not really our enemy. She's just making sure that we're, you know, good enough to do what must be done. And after this, uh, second fight we won't have to fight her again um okay. and <laughs> just 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 a little bit uh, i gotta but, make it a little bit spicy <laughs> just a little bit um, and there we saw a little bit of more wall cling storage as well um thankfully even though we're on one health you can't die during this part it's a uh, it's a scripted uh section of the run and uh, after this dramatic exit here, I believe Emma's going to be going for uh, another form of early control. I am debating doing it. I don't think I should. Okay. I'm not going for it. I'm a coward. <laughs> there, there, there are a lot of things that save a little insy bitsy bit amount of time that if, like, you know, we were talking earlier about some of the Fury fights and stuff like that, that if you're going um, for uh, a leaderboard competitive oh, time... Are... I was like, I, I got a little scared there because I didn't see the Grimchild, but I forgot the Grimchild shows up after. This is all part of the new scurry, Scruffy stuff. Uh, not Scurry, they're a different person. Um, yeah, so you can actually permanently softlock your game there. Um, I have a backup file ready for it, and I decided not to go for it, and I got kind of scared because it's like I haven't not done it before. So yeah, we're good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um... Yeah, it, like, you know, in, in a, a marathon situation, you know, even if you have a backup ready, going for something that you know can possibly soft lock is just, you know, not always the mood. And I think that's fully understandable. Um, you know, there are strats that are safety strats and there are strats that are, uh, you know, gotta go fast strats. And then there are, you know, swag strats, which are perfect in any situation. Um, we've made our way past the great hoppers over here to Nailmaster Oro, the greedy one. Um, who charges us 800 Geo to learn his Dash Slash, which we don't even get to use to its fullest potential here in 106. But if you really like Dash Slash shenanigans, please check out all skills. 
um, on one two two one because uh, the ability to hit things through walls with dash slash is even more extended because dash slash extends the male hitbox. Um, down here below Oro, there are a few things that we need to finish collecting before we can leave out of Kingdom's Edge. Um, we're going to be headed toward a grub and then another charm, and then we're going to be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, making our way um, to another area. There are also, uh, you may have noticed the cracks in the wall that Emery just passed there. There's a somewhat secret area down there that uh, gives you a clue to the Mr. Mushroom quest, as well as has a very large rock that's full of 420 geo. Um, a lot of people may or may not have found that during their casual, um, but unfortunately not all of the secrets are actual percent, so some of them we don't get to see in 106. Uh, the charm we just picked up is the Quick Slash charm, which allows us to swing our nail faster, not one that we'll get to take advantage of in this category, unfortunately. Uh, but we, but we are... will see it in Pantheon of Hollowness. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to overcharm here again before we head into Sea Grim, and this time we're going to be fighting Grim. Um, the music in the Grim fights is some of, I think, hands down the best in the game. Um, and although this fight can be a little bit tricky, there are some strats to go uh, very fast. The balloon phase is something that Grim does every 25% of health. So if you're able to do enough damage, you can actually skip balloon phases. I think I missed the quick kill. I think too many went over his head. Yeah. It's, it's something that's very, very calculated. And again, when you see the flukes flopping around, that means that they didn't get a chance to do damage. So yeah, okay. if too many missed, then it's going to be a no-go on the, on the quick kill. No! I tried to move and it didn't move. Okay, it's okay. We get another chance to do the quick kill. Okay, we're good. Uh, we're fine. Oh, wait, hold on. I need to go get my shade first. Um... Yeah, part of the Grim fight requires going in on full soul. So once Emery grabs her soul from inside the tent, she's going to quickly farm a little bit of soul down in Crossroads. Um, I didn't get a, get a chance to explain it the first time through, but when Grim bows at the beginning of the fight, if you are to attack him with uh, a regular attack, uh, regular magic, or a nail hit, he gets very mad and goes into an early balloon so that you end up dealing with uh, four balloons instead of the normal three balloons that you would in a fight. But because of the strangeness with the way that flukes behave, uh, Grim doesn't unstagger and you're able to unload um, is it three or four full sets of flukes while he's still just bowing? It's three. three. The damage rotation that I'm trying to do in the fight is very, very specific in order to skip the balloon. Um, I was going to try to set up for a certain position to go for three flukes there, but um, I, I don't really understand what happened and how I died, but the game didn't let me move right for whatever reason. Hollow Knight being spaghetti like it is. Um, yeah, but anyways, we're gonna get it this time. Or your money back. I'm kidding. Thank you for supporting the Malala Fund. <laughs> <laughs> A no money back guarantee. <laughs> yeah, and you can see that time that the flukes, there's none left flopping around. They got a full, a full land uh, on that attack. And most of his attacks have, um, a window for you to attack, but if you want to get a specific number of flukes on, the spikes out of the floor is the best. And there we go. Yeah. Very nice. <sighs> it's all right. Uh, that is one of the hardest fights in the run. Yeah, go ahead. Awesome. Uh, we have a $599.87 donation from Anonymous saying, save the Nailsmith, kill the Pantheon. And another $200 donation from Anonymous saying, love this marathon, love the runners, love the games. Let's see that Hollow Knight bonus run. Oh, and save the Nailsmith, I guess. 
<laughs> and just to give an, a quick update to everybody on our bid war for saving or killing the nail smith, save is actually in the lead right now at seven hundred and seventy six dollars, and kill is at six hundred and twelve dollars. And we actually do have another bid war up for the custom skin bid war. And right now we have Hat Kit and Mimikyu at $25 each. So be sure to uh, donate and get your custom skin in. Yeah, and both of those are, are very amazing detailed skins. Um, I, I, I could talk all day about Hollow Knight. I also could probably talk all night, all day about Hollow Knight skins because there's so many of them. Um, there's literally over like a hundred different options of custom skins for your knight if you get into uh, modding custom knight after your casual playthrough. And uh, yeah. they're very easy to use. Colette is actually the one who um, runs that document, so she's the one to reach out to. Yeah, if I, you ha I see have just a list, have. and like every time I find uh, a new public skin, I just add it to my list. And uh, I'm planning on adding like some pictures so that people can, can see without having to download it. But there are so many, I have to say it again, so many great artists that, uh, you know, donate these skins for people to use. Um, after spending hours and hours, the sprite sheet for Custom Night or for Hollow Knight is very, very detailed and making uh, a unique custom knight that's more than just like a, a recolor of the cloak or something like that. Um, there are many that are like full Hollow Knight sized recreations of uh, uh, characters. Um, it's just amazing. We uh, stopped by to see our buddy Lem once again, and now we're going to head over to the west side of the waterways. Um, we've got a grub to pick up here, and then we're going to be sea dashing just over the surface of the water on our way to get a mask shard. And this exit of the waterways generally would require uh, a gauntlet that you'll see after uh, Emory goes through the next transition. But with uh, more lever slash or lever skips shenanigans, we're going to slash it through the gate. This is one that does require one of the nail arts to activate, and it's going to put us back out into fungal wastes. Um, just like that. So we don't have to mess with all the harumps. And that's, I also uh, want to. Uh, note real quick that it's very important that I stay at full health over the course of everything I'm about to do. Yeah, uh, you were very narrowly missed by a fluke while you were picking up that mask shard. I was yeah. uh, biting my nails. Yeah, the flukes can get into that okay. room with you and sometimes... Oh, uh, sometimes the Grimchild will do you a solid and take care of them. Um, sometimes they'll just magically dodge you and sometimes they will hit you as soon as the uh, mask shard animation is complete. Uh, that little spiky gauntlet was to get over here and save Bretta, who somehow managed to get herself stuck down here in Fungal Wastes. I really, I want to know how she ended up down here. I, I, I don't know how she managed to get through the acid and bouncy shrooms to get stuck there. Um, but we want her because she has a mask shard hidden in her house. And I'm we'll trying to get some extra soul here. I need to make up a lot of soul in order to do the section correctly. So I'm going to take some time to farm here. Grimchild yeah, is not lords. helping me. <laughs> Grimchild has the worst aim in the world, unless you want him to miss. And then he is a sniper. Um, but we I are back up. able to do this. We're back up to full health. Yeah, there is uh, basically some, I don't, I don't know if it was necessarily a quick kill technically, but a very, very fast Mantis Lords fight with flukes. Um, but it does require having enough soul for the flukes and we're a little bit short here. But even without the ideal amount, this is still going to be fairly quick. Um, okay, we wait. might be okay with that much soul. Yeah. I'd rather show off the fight correctly and lose a ton of time in the... Because this is a showcase, you know? Like, we're just... We're having fun. That is man true. This fight is super fun to watch. Yeah, and I think Mantis Lords is, like easily one of people's favorite casual bosses once they've beaten them 
Um, it's kind of one of the first times the game is going to put multiple enemies uh, in a fight for you. So I and... want to point out um, really quickly that that C dash that Emre queued up there was really calculated to force the Mantis Lord to spawn on the opposite wall so that she could dash over and load him up with flukes. Yep. Yep. And just like that, uh, the second phase has gone by just as quickly as the first. Um, that guy, I think that guy is for mainly for soul. We're going to want to have full soul um, going into fungal core because in fungal core, this is part of one of the reroutes. We now fight uh, a Grimkin in the core. Um, we used to pick up uh, a different one and we didn't have to mess with this guy. Um, but the level three Grimkin do double damage. So when you're overcharmed, that's going to be uh, up to four health since overcharming is double, double, double damage. Um, so we want to be very careful going through fungal core. Uh, there's also a, uh, a mask fragment at the very end of fungal core. But Fungal Core is an area that you have to have both pieces of vertical to enter. You need wings and claw. So it's a little bit of a late game area, even though the, the enemies that are in here are not super tough enemies. Um, but it is a place that you don't have you don't have the ability to access early on. There's a few little shortcuts here where we'll fall through. And then as we get to the bottom here is the Grimkin. Got it. Nice. Very <sighs> okay. nice. Also, yeah. right here is the first mass shard you're going to see me quit out on. Um, as soon as the... You see the mask that started to fade in? As soon as that starts to happen, I'm 100% safe to quit out. The game has registered that I've obtained it. It saves a bit of time. Yep, yeah. so we'll save and quit out of here. And we're going to be going to finally take advantage of our King's Brand and head down back into Ancient Basin towards the Abyss to get our Shade Cloak. Um, this is an area that is, um, again, a later game area. And it's kind of a strange combination because there's a bunch of Crawlids, which are just plain regular enemies chilling, crawling along, and siblings, which will come at you and do double damage. So the ones don't have to worry about too very much, but the siblings are definitely uh, the dangerous foe down here. Uh, the little squiggly root in the background is a cue that you can use to drop down here fairly easily. And then we're gonna head over to the lighthouse. Um, the void tendrils, uh, when we first get here, we won't actually go over to look, but there's a, a vast sea, well, maybe it's a vast sea is an exaggeration, but there's a large pit of void tendrils that are in our way. So we want to climb up to the top here to turn on the lighthouse, which will calm the void tendrils and allow us to pass and get to Shade Cloak. Ooh. That was fantastic movement until that one sibling was like, nah, you're not allowed yeah. to pass. <laughs> Yeah, and the way I oh, understand no. siblings is that they do spawn in in a consistent place, but then they just wander RNG. Um, so you never know quite what you're going to get once you start climbing. And we're coming up on another save quit here. As soon as the pinky toe touches the void pool, we're safe to quit out. Um, and skip the entire collection animation of Shade Cloak. Um... And we'll, it is a hard save, so we'll end up right back in the same place, but we've skipped um, the collection. Yeah, um, and again, that's a loadless time save. Um, so even if it's like a little slower or break even RTA, this is how the run would be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so like, for example, if you're if you're wanting to speed run Hollow Knight on console, console does not do that because the loads are so much longer that it's not really worth it. Uh, that's something you only really see with PC. Down here in the basement, we discovered that Sly is the uh, nail sage. <gasps> Shocker. And he grants <laughs> us the nail master's glory since we've learned all three of the nail arts. Um, after doing all those dark rooms, we're finally going to go ahead and purchase the lantern 
not because we particularly need it and not because it's a percent, but because we you. need to fight no eyes. Um, and that is a fight that you cannot do in the dark. Um, we're also picking up a, a vessel fragment and a mask shard here. And um, the shot purchases for the mask shard in particular are to set us up for getting a full mask shard at a very specific point down the road. Um, when you get a complete mask, it heals you. And when we're in the hive, we have a high probability of needing a heal. So it's routed so that the hive mask shard um, will be a complete one. Stopping to pick up a grub friend. And then we're going to head over to Moloch, which is one of the most strange and oddly satisfying quick kills of the run. Um, basically, and I hope I'm explaining this accurately, but it's, it's loaded in in the back before it actually jumps out to fight you. And with flukes, we can do enough damage that it basically oh, no. never spawns. <gasps> well, I need to get this. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know how I was holding Wait. down. I'm an analog player, so sometimes that happens. <laughs> and you could see how it wasn't dead, and then one more fluke flopped into it, and you and that one more fluke was enough. So thank goodness there. If um, that wasn't it, I don't know what I was going to do. <laughs> and if you get too far into the arena, if the gate closes behind you, then it's too late, and you cannot finish that. Um... We'll head over here. There's, I think this is the last crossroads grub and we didn't get it earlier because we just didn't need to. We weren't in this area, um, but we're going to be headed down into the teacher's archives for the Umu fight. And um, so now is the perfect time to pick up that grub. We have a little bit to do. I have to do some shopping. There's a, a minor boss coming up. So if you have any donations, this might be a good time. Oh yes, Excellent. pancakes approaching. Excellent, excellent. I would like to update everybody that we have reached $78,000 raised for Malala Fund. Thank you everybody for your support and contributions to, to such a great cause. And speaking of grubs, I would like to remind everybody that your donation, if you do a $10 minimum donation, you'll be entered to win a Hollow Knight Grub Perler wall art. It's super cute. I saw a showcase earlier today. Check it out at gamesdoneclick.com on the prizes tab. And there's a couple of other Hollow Knight prizes you can be entered to win. Check it out. Uh, we stopped at Leg Eater there just to buy out the three charms that he carries. They are the fragile charms. And thankfully we do not need to upgrade them into the unbreakable versions because that would be a huge expense. And we already have uh, a lot of expensive things we need to buy in this run. Upgrading all fragile charms is over 30,000 geo. But if you do think that sounds fun, there is a category that does that. So there's a Hollow Knight speedrunning category for everyone. Nope. Yeah, um, we have we have an absurd meme leaderboard. Like it is a lot. Anything you can think of, people run it. Yeah. Um, that boss was Elder Who. I don't know. He was dead too quick. Don't know who it was. Um, but uh, he actually can be very much a hassle in other categories. But again, the flukes just uh, put him down before he has a chance to rain pancakes on you. Uh, during one of his attacks, he teleports completely away and you can't do any damage. All you can do is wait. So the faster that fight goes, the better. Um, we set a dream gate so that we will be able to return to the surface quickly because um, basically we're headed down here to fight a giant jellyfish. That jellyfish is guarding a librarian who is also one of the dreamers. And the dreamers are all going to be hard saves, so you can't use uh, a bench to travel back after you fight them. We have to have a dream gate set somewhere that's useful. And yeah. also, the dreamers heal you, which is why I don't care too, too much about my health here. Yeah, so Umu uh, has uh, several different kinds of attacks that he can do. He has a, a fast attack, a slow attack. Um, he does three, and then we're supposed to get a guaranteed hit on him. On this patch, I believe, though, there's a 25% chance of an extra attack that didn't oh. happen. That's always. Oh, that's always? Always 20. Yeah, even in Pantheons later. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. 
Umu is just RNG boss. Um, it, it's really detrimental in any percent to get an extra attack because in any percent they have to take like an extra dunk. Um, for us, it's just an inconvenience. Like we just sigh and say, oh, Umu. Yeah, most Thanks categories have to do a very precise setup to even get uh, a two cycle, let alone a one cycle. Uh, but in 106, as long as you have a clear like line of sight to Umu, it's pretty much free because flukes. <laughs> um, and here we are collecting the first dreamer, which we haven't talked about too much. Uh, we avoided a cutscene with them at Hornet 1. We saw them briefly when we picked up our Dream Gate, and basically each Dreamer acts as a lock upon the door of the Black Egg Temple. So as we go through and absorb them, we're unlocking the Black Egg Temple, which is where the final bosses are to be found. And Coral, Dad Bod, thank you for your service. Coral's the homie. That uh, bot is actually his legal surname, by the way. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> shout outs to Mikaly. Um <laughs> And now we're going to head down to Queen Station, not to take advantage of the stag, but to do this little thorns gauntlet for another one of our mask shards. Um, and then we're going to head back up to our dream gate once again and move up into um, Queen's Garden. This saves time uh, skipping animations, like I said earlier. We're going to do one more quit out on the next mash art. And I think that's it. I think this is the last quit out that we're going to yeah. do. Oh, yeah. We're going to stop and see No Eyes before we go to Queen's Garden. Yeah. Almost forgot. Would like to forget. Understandable. <laughs> no, this is a very, very creepy boss, just overall. And if you oh, actually goodness. talk to her and. Whoa, uh, Why get am her I lore. like this? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> fine. No one panic. I'm going to go for a skip here. Nice. I got it. Okay. So that's called Airwalk. Um, airwalk can be a major glitch, but in that case is a minor glitch. I'm allowed to get a second aerial dash uh, by dashing along the floor at a certain spot where it gives me um, just continued walking while in the air. No big deal. That's totally normal. Yeah, very and normal some of things. these some of these things sound very complicated and like, oh my god, how did anybody ever find that? Or how would anybody ever learn that? But um, you know, there are tools to allow practicing these things. Uh, the debug mod lets you practice things repetitively and even with visible hitboxes, uh, which can really be helpful in cases of stuff like the airwalk where it's dependent on where the, the seams of things meet together. Um, but No Eyes thankfully did not teleport away from all the flukes and uh, that fight went pretty well and we got her mask shard as well. Yeah, Noaiz um, is a terrible RNG fest because she can teleport basically anywhere more or less any time that she wants. Yeah, uh, it's a 35% chance to teleport on contact, and then she also has a timer to teleport. Yeah, but flukes yeah. don't interact in the normal way, so... Uh, massive Moss Charger, I'm sorry, you're not a percent. You might be a boss, but you're not a percent. Um, we don't need the money that Massive Moss Charger drops at this point in the run. Um, and actually, I feel like somebody can correct me, Emre, if you know this is true. Does it not drop as much money on 1221 as it does yeah, on the Yeah, it's patch? like, it's either 120 or 150, and on yeah. later patches, it's 300. So it's a yeah. lot more valuable in other categories. Yeah. Um, but we do need to come over here to get the grub and to get this vessel fragment. And this uh, takes care of Green Path for us. So now we can head back one more time to the Dream Gate that we left um, outside of Noah's Arena, and we'll head down into Queen's Garden. Um, well, we is the arena actually considered Queen's Garden? I'm not sure. Yeah, we can fit in some donations. Oh, sure. Uh, real quick, $100 from Alternatives to Fighting saying, Hollow Knight is one of my partners and my favorite game. We're amazed by m -Ray's skills. We can't wait to see the Pantheon. Thank you so much for your contribution. And we have another $100 donation from Babaricia saying, Save the Nailsmith, save the frames, the world needs art. 
And just to update everybody on the bid war, we have Save in the lead with $849 and Kill at $612. So if you want to kill the Nailsmith, better get your donations in. Or if you want to save the Nailsmith, get ahead. Nice. Congratulations on, on getting ahead, Nailsmith lovers. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm um, sensing some bias from Colette. Just, just to, I, I don't think my bias is a secret to anybody. <laughs> Nailsmith is one of my one of my top favorite characters. Um, this arena that we just finished is everyone's top least favorite arena. Oh, that's not a very good segue. Never mind. Um, <laughs> it looks simple because it's just full of you know very minor enemies, but there's so many of them that it just. It, it's a bad arena. It's it's frustrating, and it can go surprisingly badly, you know, for being full of mosquitoes. But Emery took care of it and collected the Howling Wraiths, um, which unfortunately we really don't get to take advantage of in 106, uh, partly because flukes are so good. The only time you'll see Howling Wraiths really used is to get Shriek, maybe a couple times in Kahlo if there happen to be enemies um, that are above, but for the most part, it's just not something that we take advantage of. What we do take advantage of is jank hitboxes that allow us to fall into thorns and respawn next to a lever instead of doing that little uh, spiky gauntlet. That's not something you can do on current patch. Don't try this at home. Um, but that's uh, a cheeky little damage respawn. We'll leave our dream gate here. That's actually the tree that we're going to collect some of our extra essence from. Uh, once we go over here and take care of a few other things, including picking up this key. Um, the love key is so that we can go and fight the collector later. Um, the tower of love is not exactly where you'd expect to find such a creepy character, but it is what it is. Um, and it is one of the unique keys in the game. There are four simple keys and four doors that have simple locks, um, and those are all interchangeable. But the love key is very specifically for the Tower of Love, uh, kind of like the elegant key was to get into Soul Warrior 2. Um, that was an intentional damage boost or damage respawn again. And we're going to head here into Deep Nest just long enough to pick up another grub. Um, I hope Emray can have some good luck and choose the right grub here. This is a very dangerous room. It's full of mimics and, you know, uh, sometimes you, you just might pick the wrong one. But nice. Th three is my lucky number. Three is my lucky number, too. <laughs> after, after 87, but there's not 87 mimics. Um, <laughs> this uh, dream tree ends to be, tends to be the one um, that's easiest to use to pick up essence because we have to come back here anyway and you see how most of the essence is right along the path that we're already following. So we don't worry about completing it, we just want to get up to, I believe the magic number is 1508, so Emre got even one extra. And then this room, which I, it, I remember casually just dying repeatedly in that room, but once you know the, the cycle again to get through before the enemies really have a chance to attack you, you can get through it fairly quickly. Um, and then we'll be taking this bench for later. Um, I want to cover before we actually get into this arena. We already passed those little bush enemies um, once already, but on this patch, they actually cannot hurt me. Um, with the spines that they throw out. So we can safely just dream nail uh, for free soul. And that's also gonna be useful later uh, during the scariest part of the run, but we'll get to that whenever we get there. Yeah, the spikes are on I'm like the wrong uh, layer to actually interact with the knight. So they look scary, but they are in fact not even there. Um, Headed up here, we're going to pick up another grub. There are 46 grubs total, and we're well over halfway through them, although I don't, I, I, I'm not so so good that I know the exact count at this point off the top of my head, but um, we it's don't go either. to see Grub Daddy until the very end of the run when we have all of them already. Okay, this so this is our frog heck. Uh, Y'all saw frog heck earlier on Axiom Verge. Uh, we also have our own variations of Frog Hack. Frog Hack is terrible in every Metroidvania. However, you cannot make a good Metroidvania without a good Frog Hack. 
I said it. I stand by that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now I know what I need to do. <laughs> Add frogs to your Same. game. Yeah. <laughs> Frog RNG is the worst phrase in every platformer, and yet. And yet. <laughs> Um, if you are familiar with the grub locations and you're worried that we forgot one, don't worry. We will pick up that friend in a little while later. Um, again, taking advantage of hitting things through walls, we actually can collect that grub after we fight Traitor Lord. Um, this room that we were in uh, just a moment ago, the room with the grub in it, is the same room as the entrance to the White Lady's house. So even though you can't get from one to the other, you can hit from one side to the other side. Um, headed up this way, we're going to make our way towards Trader Lord and set a dream gate right outside of the Trader Lord fight uh, because there's a grub that we have to go up to the very top of Queen's Garden to rescue. And it can be a little bit of a tricky spot. There's a couple Petras up there and if they hit you, um, it's easy for it to be like a wombo combo because there are thorns everywhere. Uh, but we can at least go into it with full magic because there's a couple spiny fellows around to dream now, and that was really clean. Um, yeah, as long as you do the movement correctly the first time, you're good. But if I had messed it up, uh, <laughs> that could have been kind of disastrous. Yeah. Um, Trader Lord is well known as uh, somewhat of a difficult boss on current patch. On 1221, it's a little bit of a different story. He's not much more than a giant glorified Mantis Trader. Uh, he doesn't have as much HP and he doesn't have a couple of the moves that he has on current patch. So between that and the fact that uh, you can hit him before he's fully spawned, you can attack in the ceiling and then continue that into a quick kill. Uh, it's pretty trivial. He didn't even get a chance to do anything. <laughs> yeah, he didn't yeah. even scream. <laughs> yeah. So that was Trader Lord. Uh, and now we're gonna go in here and remember to pick up the grub. Hi, friend. And in here is the white lady who is a tree and she is bound down oh, here right. of her own volition. Don't worry about it. She's tied up because she decided to be. And she's going to grant us the first half of the King Soul. Uh, this is the Queen's Fragment, and we can't do anything with it since it's only half of a piece, but we'll be collecting the other half uh, a little bit later. Her so design is really, really cool, too. Just, like, how big she is and how branchy yeah. she is. And she even makes an appearance uh, in P5. A lot of people maybe don't notice or overlook, but she is in one of the scenes with the God Seeker. And if you talk to the God Seeker, uh, he talks about how she evades them. Um, but she's, she's a pretty cool character, and she will give you quite a bit of lore also. Uh, if you go back to her wearing different charms, if you go to her wearing the Grim Child, she has things to say about Grim. If you go to her wearing Defender's Crest, she has things to say about Dung Defender. Huh. And uh, you can also attempt to bring the flower to her. So she's she's a very interesting character. Um, we're making our way down here into Deep Nest. Uh, these rooms would be dark, but we did pick up the lantern, so that's kind of convenient, although these dark rooms aren't too bad. Um, and we're going to make our way into Beast Den, AKA Deep Nest Spider Town. Um, so right here, there's not really a whole ton going on if you want to get some donations. For sure. We have a $25 donation from Hollow Teacher saying, Hollow Knight is one of my favorite games and opened me to a whole new world of games that I once considered impossible. Additionally, as a teacher myself, this cause is so close to my heart. I can tell you firsthand that this is an extremely difficult time to be in education as a student or educator, and we need all the love and support we can get. And on that note, save the nailsmith. Lesson three. Thank you so much for your contribution. Do we have time for one more? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. We have a $125 donation from This Is Chris saying, I'm so glad I could catch the Hollow Knight run. It's one of my favorite games, even though it's way too hard for me to actually play it. Good luck, Emray, and let's keep raising more money for the Malala Fund. 
Uh, you can probably so do this... one more. Yeah. Sure. We have a $25 donation from Colorless Tiger saying, Boss Rush Hype. And yes, that Boss Rush is coming because we did hit that milestone. And to remind everybody, we do have a bid war going on for the custom skins for that bonus game with Hat Kit in the lead with $75 and Mimi Q with $25. So if you want to see your favorite skin in the bonus game, be sure to donate and uh, assign it to that incentive. So that was Hera, and uh, you see Hornet sitting there because Hera's actually Hornet's mom. Um, and Hornet's a little bit sad, but she understands that it has to be done, so she's not, uh, she's not too mad at us. So we've got two of the three dreamers now. We've unlocked two of the three locks on the Black Egg Temple, and we're going to finish uh, our Deep Nest things over Charmed um, as we head out of Beast Den. Uh, we don't need to have Grimchild on for this stretch, but we do have um, one more flame that we'll have to collect later on. Um, um, I also want to mention, um, I am overcharmed right now. I know my HUD doesn't show it, but uh, that's just something that happens with the game. It's a little bit buggy. That one wasn't a pun, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually the, the HUD will have kind of like a purple electricity behind it when you're overcharmed. And you could see that on Emery's charm menu, but it just didn't transfer over to the HUD for reasons. Uh, you can also see it there as she does an inventory drop. And that charm that we just picked up was Weaver Song, uh, which summons little spider homies to hang out with you. That's also another one of the charms that has a fun interaction. If you wear that charm along with Grub Song, the Weavers will actually collect soul for you. Um, and we're gonna Dream Nail this Devout to get full magic before we head over here to drop another Dream Gate and head up to fight Galeon. Um, another one of the Dream Warriors. And I've kind of lost track of where we are in our Essence Collection but we're getting pretty close to our goal because we don't have very many Dream Warriors left. And Galeon has uh, his Scythe also spinning around, which can be a little bit of a challenge if you don't just put flukes on him and, you know, knock him out before he can even get a full cycle in. Um, personally, I always have trouble with things that have, like, adds or projectiles, so I struggled a lot with Galeon, but... Flukes take care of most things. Um, we're not gonna head back down to our dream gate yet. We're going to actually head up here towards the uh, failed tramway because we need to pick up the tram pass. And this is kind of a creepy area with all these uh, little silverfish enemy spitting gross things, uh, you know. But we don't have to stay here very long, thankfully. There's another really clean sea dash that we can just take and uh, pick up the tram here before gating out. <clears throat> and we're on our way to a fight that is one of the main reasons why we are overcharmed in this section. Uh, that's going to be the Nosk fight uh, right after we pick up a couple grubs first. Don't spoil. Don't spoil. I don't want anyone to know what's about to hit them. <laughs> okay. Um, this, I was just going to say that this is another grub that's a lot easier when you can just nail art things through walls. Um, and then we're going to head back down here uh, towards the secret entrance. Um, and there is a little bit of a preview for this boss when you come the other route down toward this hot spring. And it, it, I think, like what I saw it when I first saw it, it was like, what is going on? It's so confusing. But then eventually you find this spot over here and things start to make sense. There is a grub that we're gonna free here. And then we're gonna go through another hidden wall. There's a series of hidden walls through here. And then, hey, who's that down there? They look like me. Um, what is this, Axiom Verge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is a very small sort of maze. Like, there are a couple paths that lead to dead ends, but it's not really, uh, you know, anything that would qualify as a true labyrinth or anything. It's just, uh, 
couple twists and turns, there is a shortcut that you can open, uh, but we're not gonna stop for that because that would be slow. Um, taking advantage of flukes, doing weird fluke things again. If I did this correctly, this windup is gonna be approximately seven times faster than the fight itself. Yeah, and uh, there it is. <laughs> this is nice. That nice. that was a boss fight. Um, I know a lot of people watching might have struggled with that boss, but we have flukes, so yeah. And also, we have two additional uh, soul vessels, which are crucial for that quick kill, uh, in order to have enough enough soul to take care of him. The thing that's really funny to me about that one is that the flukes clearly get absorbed in a box that is around the night mimic and not like on the night mimic itself so they're just like disappearing into thin air it's great yeah it's uh it's it's a lot of fun to to take advantage of like it, and it's not free absolutely because you do need to know where to stand and how to do things you can't just like throw flukes wherever you want them to go like it's a different kind of precision than uh you know precise actual fight, quote unquote. Um, but flukes are just very, very fun, in my opinion, to play with. And uh, running on 1221 is more accessible than it ever has been. There's uh, a very easy way to down patch the game now. Um, this damage tank is intentional to take the faster cycle through that Garped maze. And then we're gonna be going through some more Garped shenanigans. Um, on our way up to this vessel fragment. I'm never gonna get over the name Garpede. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some of some of the enemies have such good in-game names that like I mean there's no like nickname for the Garpedes. That well that I know, I'm sure, you know. There there do exist nicknames out there, but why would you give it a nickname when it's already called Garpede? It's true. Um, and the the charm that we picked up there, I didn't really mention too much, was Sharp Shadow. Uh, that is a charm that makes your Shade Dash uh, basically a weapon and also makes it into a little bit longer of a dash. Um, another one that we don't take uh, advantage of in this category, but in categories that are very movement focused, uh, it, it is used. Uh, things like White Palace and Path of Pain individual levels just to get you that little bit of extra speed and that little bit of extra distance uh, more than for the uh, offensive capabilities. So the lower tram has three stops. Uh, the leftmost stop is in Deep Nest. We're here in the middle stop, which is um, above where we fought Broken Vessel and Lost Kin earlier. And while we're here, we're going to stop by and save another grub and pick up another piece of pale ore. And um, we took the bench in the tram so that we're able to save quit back there after this bit. And this is a small gauntlet that is pretty easy to take care of with Shade Soul, um, which is why we don't bother with it earlier. Oh wait, we have Shade Soul right here earlier. We don't bother with this earlier, I think literally just because it's slightly off to the left. Yeah, there's no quick way to get out of here without trim. Yeah, because at that time our, our save point is not anywhere close. Um, Fun fact though, for Rando, since we've been talking about Rando a lot, uh, there is a background bubble near the entrance to the gauntlet itself that you can pogo to get out, um, which is really, really neat because it doesn't look like something you can visually pogo. Yeah, that, that's a fun one. Um, and here we have actual small, tiny 1221 bees. Um, these are about a quarter of the size of current patch bees and they die in one hit. So if you're used to the bees on current patch, these might just look cute and harmless and adorable to you. And for the most part they are, but they still can get in the way um, and hit you. <laughs> No, I, I want you to know that the second that you said the first part of that I'm sentence sorry. was whenever I got hit. <laughs> I've been trying so hard just to like not speak like in, oh, this could happen. I don't want anything <laughs> bad to happen. These are just facts. Um, <laughs> there's a really Thanks slick a dream nail that you can get here. Um, 
off of the small b. And I guess I don't know that I explicitly mentioned earlier, but dream nailing enemies is not just for swag. It's because dream nailing enemies gives you soul. Um, and we did take a hit from that level three Grimkin, which did double damage, but that went fairly well. Um, yeah, that's pretty expected. So, yeah. Um, as long as nothing else catastrophic happens, uh, we'll be fine. We're coming up on our friend Big B. Uh, everyone in the community just calls him Big B, like one word. Um, and we need him to come break a wall for us. That was almost perfect. Come on. Let's go. Uh, one more Good bounce would have put it there. <laughs> All right, and so you see here, this is the shard I talked about earlier that fills a mask for us and gives us this much needed heal because Hive is very, very dangerous. And we're not out of danger yet because we still have to go get Hive blood. Oh my God, Big B. Was that B oh upside God, down? Oh my God, Big B. <laughs> <laughs> that B was upside down. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought I saw. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, so, good video game. We've got a very clean Hive Knight skip here from Emre, and the way you accomplish that skip is by playing on one, two, two, one. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> I've heard think that the Hive is DLC. The Hive itself is not DLC, but Hive Knight is. Um, and that is one that's not included. Uh, 1221 is the Hidden Dreams and the Grim Troop DLCs. So the Lifeblood DLC is uh, 1.3. Yeah. Um, so that's why like we have categories for 106%, which is this patch. Uh, 107 can be done on any of the later patches, and then 112 is probably the most popular max percent category. Yeah, um, there's a, a big thing in my notes for this that is don't spoil Hive Knight. Um, just because <laughs> <laughs> the Hive Knight skip. Thank you for that, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, this here is uh, kind of the back door to Isma's Grove. If you were to continue to the left, you'd actually end up where you got Isma's tier. But we're just popping in quickly to get a grub, and then we're gonna head over here to the back door of the hive for another grub. And that little dash over the acid that Emery did there was one of the small optimizations that you might not notice if you're watching a speed run for the first time, but dashing over the acid is just a little bit faster than swimming through the acid. Um, it's very precise right there. I got it the first time, but not the second time. I always get hype whenever I get it both. Yeah, and you can tell, I mean, just how narrow that little uh, tunnel that the acid is in is, and uh, just the level of precision needed for those kind of tricks is hard to um, get them every single time. Um, we're gonna head up Kingdom's Edge this time to an area, oh wait, first we have to go down. I almost forgot. Uh, we'll drop a Dream Gate here, and we're gonna go down and take care of uh, Markoth. Um, and getting enough soul there serves a couple purposes. Um, we want to have enough to, um, to, to put all of Luke's on Markov and we want to start on the right side because his shield will spawn on the left side. So you see there, we finished in three flukes, but we did have a backup cast just in case. Uh, with the platforms, sometimes the flukes can basically bounce off the platforms to the point where they don't end up hitting the boss. And if Markov's shield catches them, the shield actually will fully just absorb them and then, you know, you miss out on the damage as well. Then we dream gate back here and we're going to be climbing up and headed over to the collector. Um, this is a boss that can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but there is a consistent scream skip that will allow us to get in a bunch of damage at the start while he's still cackling about they're about to be a fight. Um, there's a couple of uh, mosquitoes in here that we can just take advantage of for soul. And then there are very consistent visual cues to set up this skip. And the one thing you have to be careful of doing this is not to use more than six sets of flukes because the collector can underflow and if the HP goes below zero, he becomes invincible. So that was a really flawless fight, pretty much. And Very nice. 
up here, we're going to get our reward, the best reward of all, which is three grubs that we'll be freeing. I did put the dream gate down, right? Uh, I hope so. I kind of autopiloted that. <laughs> I think so, but I'm not actually sure. Okay, I feel like you might have yelled at me, like you would have realized. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Because, well, okay. th that's one of those things, it's so easy to have a muscle memory because you open the door and then you place the dream gate while the door is opening. Yeah. And you do it so naturally that it's easy to be like, question mark? But I think you would notice more if you were standing there, like, watching the door open and not do anything. So um, we're grabbing a little bit more soul here and then we're going to head into town and um, take care of a couple errands. Um, a few more grubs and then another fight that is usually hard that is trivialized by flukes. Um, we're also this going to be upgrading time. our nail shortly. Um, no. No, we still have Sorry. plenty of time. Um, would, would this be a good time for donations or? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, sorry to butt oh, in. I thought you were but... asking, like, is it time? Because we were talking about the nail smith. Oh, 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 no, no. I just wanted to get in some donations here. We have some wonderful ones coming in. At $125 donation from Gregor Mudkey saying, some pain for the runner, big gain from Malala Fund. Thank you so much for your contribution. And another $125 donation from Lexer saying, I love seeing Hollow Knight at GDQ. This money is for two good causes, Malala Fund and Saving the Nailsmith. Thank you so much. And a $13 donation from Non-Binary Code saying, a lucky $13 towards save, Nail Save Smith. Wait, that can't be right. Save Nail Smith. Yeah, that's it. And again, fast fights, hollow nights, and trans rights. Absolutely. Yes. And one last $10 donation from Chalk Focado saying, not the Nail Smith. Thank you so much for your contribution. And just to update everybody on our grand total, we have $78,000, oh, $78,750 total raise for Malala Fund. Thank you everybody for your generosity. We are so close to hitting 79K. And just to remind everybody, we do have ten, two bid wars open. One for Saver Kill Snailsmith and another for the custom skin uh, for the bonus run today. Pantheon of Hollow Nest. So be sure to get your donations in and bid on those custom skins. Oh, so 106% is the category that gets to own the crown for the fastest Watcher Knight fight. It's so fast that we don't break the chandelier. Um, so you might be in chat going, wow, she can maybe beat it so much faster. She just broke the chandelier. It's actually slower because we killed them so quickly. Yeah, thus is the power of flukes. And the, the this is another example of flukes being very fast, but also very precise. If you miss even one single fluke out of two fluke casts, you do not kill the Watch Knight. So your positioning is very, very important to make sure that all the flukes land on them. Um, because if one misses and a Watcher doesn't die, then that can throw off your rhythm for all of the rest of the Watchers. And with that, we're collecting our third dreamer, Lurian the Watcher, and have unlocked the Black Egg Temple. That means it's time to go beat the game, right? If you want to just um, get the bad ending, quote unquote, yes. <laughs> um, also, getting the final dreamer unlocks one more thing. Uh, there's another boss that we're going to fight that is only unlocked once we've defeated all the dreamers. And we're gonna go do him real quick as soon as we get um, our nail upgrades. Uh, we're not getting all the nail upgrades. We don't have all the pale lore for it yet. So don't worry, it's not time for the bid war to end yet. You guys still have your plenty of time to get your donations in for save or kill. Uh, we're just going to say hi to Ronnie Joe real quick. Yes, and once we get over there, you know, I mentioned earlier, he tells us what his name is. You guys will have the opportunity to listen and judge for yourselves. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> see, see if, if the community lore is accurate. Um, our friend Lem helping us out here. We're going to be getting uh, three nail upgrades. Uh, so we need, that's what most of this money is for. The first nail upgrade is only Geo. The second nail upgrade is Geo and one pale ore. And the third is Geo and two pale ores. Uh, and the fourth 
uh, following along those same lines we'll come back for later is Geo and three pale ores. So here he is. Hmm, ah, Ronjo Stenja. What do you think, chat? <laughs> is his name Ronnie Joe? It's vote definitely now. Ronnie Joe, but 100% but Ronnie Joe. Vote now and vote with your heart and vote for love. Okay. Um, <laughs> the uh, the reason that we're getting the nail upgrades now is partly because of White Defender, but also because we're shortly, well, relatively shortly going to be headed toward the Coliseum. And while the majority of our damage throughout the main part of the run has been magic, um, having a a powerful nail helps a lot in Colosseum because in combination with nail arts, uh, particularly like Great Slash, uh, you're able to one-shot enemies. So like Primal Aspids in the Colosseum, you're able to one-shot with a Great Slash on nail three. Um, and that makes things a lot easier. And of course, using those nail slashes to farm uh, the soul in order to have magic for the other sections. Um, Dung Defender's just sleeping down here. He's uh, one of the funnest bosses, and he's just having a little snooze. A, a, a few of the bosses in the game you do not actually kill, you just defeat, and Dung Defender is one of those. Yeah, so um, White Defender can't be knocked out of the ground like Dung Defender can, which is why you're not seeing the dives. Um, we're just gonna fluke him up. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And if you're fast enough, you this fight is just over before he even has a chance to do much. Or you, oh, I was gonna say we got a little bit of volleyball time there. Um, you can keep him airborne indefinitely uh, if you can get the rhythm down. But it can be. I I have to admit I never mastered it, so I'm always like unduly impressed when people do the volleyball. Um, it can I, uh, be a lot safer. I didn't get any of those stream nails, did I? Even whenever he came <laughs> out of the ground. What the heck, game? Rude. rude. <laughs> Extremely rude. Okay. And now you see we have 2,400 essence. Um, and that was our magic number. Um, whenever I was in Queen's Garden, remember I got one extra. That's how precise our essence routing actually is. Um, and 2,400 is what we need to get the final percentage from Seer in the run. Yep. Um, and we'll also be collecting the second half of the Seer rewards, uh, the, well, obviously before the final reward, um, which is quite a bit of, uh, you know, relics and other items. Um, but before we do that, we're going to head back to Dirtmouth and do some shopping. Uh, and we're finally going to go and visit uh, the Grub Father. So. This whole next section would be a great time for donations if there are some. And I'm actually gonna BRB really quick. Yeah, we have like a minute and a half of literally just sitting there. So it's all you. <sighs> excellent, Fuck excellent. Enough. Okay, everybody, we are so close to reaching $75,000 total raised for Malala Fund. And we have some wonderful donations coming in. $125 from Final Fantasy X Faith saying, I'm so excited to see Hollow Knight during Frame Fatales. Thank you so much to everyone who is making this event as amazing as it is. This donation goes towards seeing an amazing runner crush the path of Kang after she saved the adorable grubbies. Thank you so much for your contribution. And a $50 donation from Anonymous saying, Emery is an amazing speedrunner. We got to see them breeze through the path of pain. Thank you so much for your contribution. And a $25 donation from Major Gab. What an extraordinary game and what a dazzling speed run to date. I definitely want to see Path of Pain. Count me in. GG to M Ray and all the speedrunners. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support for our runners and for our cause. And a $25 donation from Anonymous saying, Save the Buge. The bug? <laughs> Thank you so much for your <laughs> contribution. And $10 donation um, coming in from Quack Silver saying, Lost a bet to Mathulu, so the Nailsmith lives this time. Go, Emre, go. Have a fast 106 and hopefully a fast Pantheons as well. Do we have time for a couple more? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Another $25 donation from Grey Thing saying, Hollow Knight has been one of my favorite games of all time, so I knew I needed to donate during this run. I can still remember my first 106%, though it took a bit longer than this run. 
Good luck with this run, Emre, and I can't wait to see your Pantheon room. And we have a $50 donation coming in from Tasselfoot saying, Good luck with the rest of the run, Em. Is it too late to save Zoat? Who, who is Zoat? A little too late. You remember the it's skull and green path? <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I, too I apologize. Late. Yes, I, I'm sad to report that it is too late, but um, it's not too late to save Nailsmith, right? That is correct. Okay, so we still have the bid war open and double checking here now and saving Nailsmith is way, way, way in the lead with $1,000, um, almost $1,000 ahead then kill. Uh, $1,794 for save and $737 for kill. I, I, everybody in chat, I guess their, their fighters not love, or their lovers not fighters. I almost said that backwards, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're fighters for love. <laughs> Fighter, there you go. Yes, yes. Fighters Back for love. Too. We love to see it. But if we do want to kill Nailsmith, there's still some time. Yeah, I believe the incentives will be closing at the end of Kalos, which will be coming up um, not quite next, but shortly. Yeah, probably like 10 or 15 more minutes, maybe. Hey, um, chat, you hear that? 10 to 15 minutes to kill or save Nailsmith. Get your donations in. Yeah. Um, so Emre did a little bit of shop optimization here. Um, picking up the fragments kicks you out of the shop menu, um, but everything else that was purchased didn't. So buying all of those first saves a little bit of time. Yep, and we need all of the money from Grub Daddy to make these purchases. Um, as well as we're going to have to buy out Salubra shop shortly as well. Which I do have enough Geo for. Excellent. Yes. Um, the first couple of times I did this route, I ended up short at Salubra and only Salubra. Like, she was the only problem. Um, but I realized how important the, the regular enemy Geo actually is in the route. And getting all of that Geo makes it pretty safe and cushy to actually get everything you need throughout the run. It's that precise now. It's that again, Scruffy's routing is beautiful. Yeah, and in a category like 106, there's always going to be optimizations to be made, and there's so many different variations of routes. Sometimes it just takes someone going, hey, what about this? And actually looking into it to realize that what we thought was super efficient actually could be improved. So yeah, there's I our Awoken Dream Nail. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I feel like every year we have like a new breakthrough optimization that saves minutes in this category. Yeah, and a lot of times it's not even by the same people. It's new eyes taking a look at things that are already established and, you know, coming at it with a new idea. <clears throat> um, we're yeah. remembering to pick up Dream Shield here. Very important. And then we're going to head back down into the crypts for one of the slightly more stressful parts of the run. Um, there are some consistent strats for this, but we are about to begin the flower quest. And if you're familiar with that, you know it means we need to go all the way to the other side of the map without getting hit. Because we have this very rare, very delicate, very beautiful flower that we must take to the, to the grave of the traitor's child. And she only has three or maybe 87, we don't know. <laughs> we haven't been in her garden. Um, but because we are so strong at this point, um, and because we know the game very well, we can either just avoid enemies or in a lot of cases, just one shot them. Okay, great RNG here. Um, that's exactly where I want him. That way I don't have to deal with the second enemy. It's a lot safer if he's on the right side. Um, and since we have Dash Master, it's actually five dashes instead of four dashes to equal a C dash link. Um, so that is a more optimal way to get through that room. And everybody, I'm sure, waved at Quirrell as we C dashed by. <laughs> oh, they better have. <laughs> we are actually not going to be completely buying everything from Salubra. There are a couple of charm notches that we leave in her shop um, because, because we don't really need them. Then. Yeah, oddly enough. Um, Such a weird decision. 
cool. But we we have enough for our needs. You know, would other notches be convenient? Yes, but they're generally just not quite worth the time. Um, and again, Grizz Mom, snoozing away, safe and sound. Um, oh, Grizz Mom. That is a very scary dash. <gasps> no. But again, it's... <gasps> It ate my wall jump. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the go mash hard. Um, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, okay, that's that's my GDQ trademark. That's never happened before. I've never actually lost the flower. I've been running this game for three and a half years. I've never lost the flower like that. It just did not jump. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and like we said, you know, with only one hit, like the smallest of mistakes can lead to dropping the flower, but we do need to pick up this mask shard along the route. And so finishing this now means we won't have to come in here after we reset the flower. Yeah, unlucky. That loses like a minute. Um, it's fine though. Uh, I have to lose the flower. This is the first time that uh, 106 is being shown for a charity GDQ event, and it wouldn't quite be without the why. Yeah, that is a trademark <laughs> Hollow Knight sound, I think. Everybody is very familiar with that sound from their casual. At least, I mean, I was. And I, I mean, I tried to do this as, as baby as possible, if I recall. I waited until I had Salubra's blessing, and then I sat on every bench along the way to let my soul recharge and just tried to shade soul literally everything in my path. <laughs> but we don't have time to do that here in a speed run, and we certainly can't take any other benches because um, as we saw when we had to save quit back, the Grey Mourner's house is a hard save. And we want to maintain that bench so that we can get back to her quickly. One more wave to Coral. And then we'll continue on. Farewell, Mr. Dad Bod. <clears throat> Could I give it, a quick update on the total? Yes. Awesome. Everybody, I'm happy to report that we reached $79,000 raised for Malala Fund. Thank you, everybody, for your generosity. And, you know, I have a challenge for everybody here. Can we get to 80K by the end of tonight? Make sure to donate to, on GDQ.com and get your donations in for the incentives. We do have a bid war open for the custom skin for our bonus game. Hat Kid is in the lead with $75, and Mimi Q is in second with $25. Be sure to uh, get your donations in for this bid war. I believe in you, chat. I think we can make it to 80K. Um, Some of those skins are really fantastic, by the way. Like the Ocean Princess one and the Spring one are actually two of the community favorites because they're so beautiful. I actually wanted to ask you, Emre, which one is your favorite? Um, I see Colette using Ocean Princess a lot. I like it, but my only complaint is that it's really hard to see the bosses through like the uh, the abyss shrieks. Um, but I personally use the spring skin a lot, and I think that the Mimikyu skin is really great too. Yeah. Awesome. And and there's more skins being created all the time, or being you know sort of discovered all the time because some of them just are not as common or as publicized as others. Uh, but there's, you know, everything from if you want your knight to wear just a green cloak instead of the gray cloak to if you want to run around looking like the character from Dead Cells. Um, <laughs> here again, we uh, are met with the spiny boys and they're very not dangerous spikes, which makes this room, at least in Flower Quest, not that bad. Um, and then we're going to head up here through the shortcut that we opened earlier um, on our way to the grave room. Right, and that's Flower Quest. Nice. Nice. I can't breathe just yet, though. We have a ton of difficult stuff coming up. Uh, Kalo is starting, so this is the beginning of your last call for um, all of our late game incentives. Yeah, and if you think Kalos will be a while, yes, but also no, because in a speed run, um, everything's gonna go very quickly. We're gonna put on our Colosseum build right here, which does include finally taking advantage of Soul Eater. 
Soul Eater gives more soul when you strike with the nail. Um, it, it's not quite equivalent to one spell per nail hit, but nearly. So the amount of magic that you're able to use in the Colosseum while wearing Soul Eater is just wild. Um, and we're gonna head there directly from here. We're going to uh, Dreamgate our way back to King Station. Yes. And then we're gonna head up kind of through where we fought Collector um, rather than going all the way around and continue up Kingdom's Edge through there. So that's one of the reasons we exit Collector this way is so that we can climb back up here now. And the rest of Kingdom's Edge uh, doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. We don't really have any other cleanup to do in Kingdom's Edge. So this is uh, kind of purely just a little platforming section. This would be another good spot for donations if we have a couple. Sure thing. We have a $25 donation from Hornet saying, Shaw. Sure. <laughs> $50 donation from Yukupo saying, putting this donation toward the path of pain. Let's go. Thank you so much for your donation. Do you have time for a few more? Yeah. Awesome. $7 donation coming in from Blackheart Wings saying, Wield the nail in bug domain. Let's get some geo for Path of Pain. Much love for Emery who inspired me to start playing Hollow Knight. Maybe someday I'll learn to speedrun. Thank you so much for your kind comment and for your contribution. And $100 coming from Leviathan saying, Best wishes from Seattle. Thank you so much. Nice. So we did uh, have to pay a fee in order to enter the Colo uh, to the little fool there. And generally that's fine. I remember I've come here just a couple times and not had enough money for that. So you do have to make sure that you have uh, 100 G already for that. And then we're going to basically... <laughs> Colo is an example of how knowing what's coming up can really help you do things so much faster. Um, this is one of the most difficult challenges in the game when you're coming through in a casual. And even Call of One seems like it's never going to end. But Emre knows exactly which wave is about to happen, exactly which enemies are about to spawn where. And the, the soul collection as well as the magic use is, uh, you know, all completely premeditated. So... There's no surprises at this point, but there are some surprises uh, that can happen in later colos in some of the enemies that have heavier RNG um, or that don't die quite as quickly. Um, in particular, there is a frog section in the colos. So. We do have another frog hack, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and it comes after what is, you know, arguably the hardest section of colo three, uh, which is the long floorless section. So you're already coming out um, of a very possibly stressful section. Although, again, when you know what, what enemy is going to spawn where, it's a lot easier to deal with. And a lot of the nail hits here are not necessarily needed to kill an enemy. It's just, uh, like we were saying earlier, to keep the amount of soul up to have enough magic. And... We're getting towards the end here. We've got a few more little rollers, and then we're gonna have some infected bruises, um, which are a, something to be a little small bit careful of because they do have an explosion. And if you hadn't noticed, uh, Emery is overcharmed right now. So uh, a double damage would do four overcharmed. But here we are to the double bruise moms. And the so good thing is that uh, the reward for this Kalo um, is a Charm Notch, and Charm Notches heal you, so tanking damage is fine. I also want to say um, this right here is the reason that I run 106 and not some other categories. Like, this is my main category. Kalo, as a speedrunner, I'm telling y'all, is so fun. Um, like, learning the waves and such. Like. If you want to get into max percent Hollow Knight speedrunning, um, I do recommend learning the overcharm strats because it makes everything so much more consistent than you think it would be. 
I actually think that it's much easier um, over charming than not over charming. Yeah, it you just have so much magic to work with, and it's so comfy. Um, Mikalo is one place where we obviously don't use flukes um, because there's so many instances where we can hit multiple enemies with the Shade Soul and get double hits. Um, that Shade Soul does get to really shine here over flukes. And we did get another uh, Essence Pog now that we are past the point of actually needing it. Um, but it's still a fun little, little extra bonus. Um, Every Essence drop is Pog, no matter whether it's valuable yes, or not. Here's another one. Um, and again, knowing exactly where these enemies are going to spawn and just taking them out with a Shade Soul or with a Great Slash. Um, those guys actually can be a little bit RNG when they start bouncing around. Sometimes it can work in your favor um, if they land in another one's explosion, and sometimes it can make things a little bit awkward. Um, little explodey section there. Um, easier to take care of those with the added range of a nail art, and then we're going to have a lot of poppers coming out here including a couple of the larger ones. But again, um, you know, knowing the strats in order to take them out in just a handful of moves, not too much of a problem. Kalo 2 is a uh, oh, nice. A little bit of swag. Again, <laughs> swag is always worth it. Take note, chat. Swag is even more important than going fast there, said it. Um, it's true. And there's so many swaggy ways that you can do wall playing storage. It's, it's very fun. Um, and again, just progressing through here, progressing through the waves. Uh, Kalo 2 does have a very short floorless section that's going to come up here. Um, I believe it's just a short three waves of enemies. And... Uh, the art of charging a nail art while hanging on the wall is one it took me a while to to fully grasp, but it makes that section so much easier uh, to be able to just take them out that quickly. Mm. Um, we're approaching the end here. We get the armored lobbles and they're kind of the precursor to the larger Lobbles, who are not armored, but they're very large and in charge and shoot many more fireballs. And this is another section where double hits and hitting multiple enemies is what you really want to uh, take advantage of um, to progress the waves uh, faster. And that was, oh, there he is, the last of the armored Lobbles. Um, you cannot kill the oblobbles at the same time. You will always kill one, and then the other one will get very angry and very fast and uh, gets a little bit of a health boost. Um, so you, you have to fight both at a time and then the, the second one by itself. There's no way to kill them both at once, but that was a very clean oblobbles. And that's important because we do not get a full heal at the end of Kalo 2, and we definitely want full health going into Kalo 3. Every oh. time you say oblobbles, I start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are among the sillier names of enemies. For for what is, and they are a silly looking enemy also, but they're surprisingly tough. I mean, the, yeah, not those, good at um, <laughs> the bullets that they spawn are RNG. I got lucky. <laughs> Don't go thinking that that was skill, please. <laughs> Normally you take like one or two hits in that fight. Yeah, especially trying to go fast and trying to, you know, take care of the second one as quickly as possible. Ideally... The advantage of good RNG is also a skill, so don't hurt yourself. That's, That's fair. <laughs> so in Kalo 3, the overall Kalo is longer and the waves are usually a little bit bigger. And at the end of this Kalo is, I believe, when the Nailsmith incentive is going to close. So this is last, yeah. last call. Uh, less guys, than five minutes to get your final... Get your donations yeah. in, or maybe read some donations right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna time. be working through some enemies. Absolutely. Uh, just to update everybody on the Saber Kill Nailsmith, it is 
by far saving Kill and the Nailsmith with 1,844 dollars, and then Kill is at 737. So if anybody wants to blue shell this bid war and kill Nailsmith, now is the time to do it. Be sure to get your donations in. Or if you want to make sure that he's safe, that'd be great too. Yes, if you're if you're not a violent person and would like to save Nailsmith. Yeah. Get get ahead of the game and get your donations in for saving Nailsmith. Also, just there, that was the first frog section. That's not even the one I was talking about as being the bad frog section. Uh, that was th those frogs were just a small bump in the road. Um, and also, as we do these dream nails, this is something that is not possible on current patch due to uh, adjusted hitboxes. But in one two two one it really lets us get uh, a lot of soul there during that section where otherwise you're just dodging the garpedes. It really looks like those garpedes should have been hitting. Mm -hmm. and yeah, they're supposed to. <laughs> I, I played my casual on 1.3 where it's fixed, but I got to Kahlo after seeing a speedrunner do that. Yeah, you guys know what happened. I tried it, it didn't work. I was a little, what, what happened? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> was before I really, you know, understood the differences between patches. Um, and here we have some of the Kahlo exclusive enemies. I don't remember what their real name is, but I always uh, call them... Volt Twister. Oh, Volt Twisters. I always call them Umu Twisters, because they're like Soul Twisters, but they do Umu's attack. Um, and they're only found here in Kahlo um. 3. Um, okay, I'm waiting for an attack here because that was not good. I'm at dangerous health right now. Yeah, I do get an opportunity to heal here if I can survive. Yeah, we've got a couple mini Moloch's coming up and then a full-on brooding Moloch um, in this small section. And then we'll have a little bit of a reprieve. Taking advantage again of those one, two, two, one iframes. And now we should be able to heal up. Whew, just, a, just a little bit on edge there. Um, once again, taking advantage of dream nailing, gaining soul. Uh, we're gonna be taking advantage of these garpedes. And if you position yourself correctly in some of the waves, you can actually hit two at once. And we've managed to get back to full health and full soul as we enter the floorless section. Very nice. And unlike Kahlo 2, this floor sec floorless section is actually fairly long. Um, I don't know the number of waves off the top of my head, but it just keeps popping out multiple, multiple enemies. Um, and then as we get to the end here, it shrinks uh, the, the little arena area even further. So. Just a couple more enemies here, and then we will enter Frog Heck version two. Um, and this is basically a combination of keeping yourself safe, killing them if you can, and waiting for them to jump into spikes if possible. Um, and again, it's just a complete RNG fest, and you can see how if you ha if you came out of the floorless section on low health, how this is not what you want to be the next section. But we are, uh, I would say, more than two thirds of the way through Hollow 3 now that we're done with that. And we're just going to take care of these final waves. Um, <clears throat> Probably have time to fit in, what, like one more donation? Yeah, one or two. Yeah, sure. $75 coming up from Pam and Scott saying, Such an amazing game and amazing run. Save that Nailsmith. Thank you so much for your donation. Also, and we. Oh, uh, this is this is where we need to cut this off. This is the final boss of Kahlo. All, all right, let me do one last check. And we have saving the Nailsmith, winning the bid war here. Thank you so much everybody for, for your donation. And it looks like we're saving Nailsmith. Good nice. job, chat. Yeah, you are so not this is of love. This is kind of rude RNG here because on patch one two two one the the beast is actually invulnerable when it rolls. Uh, on current patch, you can hit it with magic in the roll, but every time it rolled here, Emery wasn't able to hit it, so had to just kind of patiently wait it out until you could get the final damage in. 
and we'll be collecting one of our last large chunks of money here. We have two more major expenses. Uh, the final nail upgrade is 4,000 geo, and then we have to go down in the basin and pay our tax, which is about 3,000 geo. Well, our tax 3, for being geo. part of the, the Pale Kings family. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, we'll just make the trip here through city again, and we're gonna go over and make the right decision. Uh, if there are a few more donations, this would be a good time. For sure. Thank you so much. We have a $25 donation from Library Nurse saying, I love love. I sure do too. What about you, chat? <laughs> and we have a $25 donation Very coming awesome. from the Sound Defense saying, I have chosen the way of pain for the runner. I personally have chosen the way of the couch. <laughs> and that path of pain incentive will be coming up here in short order. Uh, after we pick up our pure nail from Ronnie Joe, we are going to be headed to the White Palace. And the path of pain is uh, about a little bit further than midway through there. So everybody get ready for your dramatic violin music and many, many saws. <clears throat> I, for one, love saws. Yeah, th these are not musical saws, to be clear. These are um, meat boy saws. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have a certain uh, music to them Stenja. if you are in there for enough hours. You know? <laughs> um, they, yeah. it, I, I, I joke, but like actually, like Godella, if Godella. you are in there for a lot of hours, like most casual players are, it just becomes, you know, a calm background humming of buzz saws. All right. Um, he is safe, 100%. Nell Smith lives. GG, everyone. Thank you for donating for that, by the way. Um, I have a special treat for all of you that, that rooted for love. Um, we're going to have to get to that right before the end of the run, though. So um, We are headed into White Palace here. This is the reason that we needed our Awoken Dream Nail, to break into even the most protected of vines, such as this uh, King's Mold Corpse. And in here is the White Palace, and there are a lot of little tricks and shortcuts in here that I'll try to point out as we go along. And uh, a lot of them are intended, some of them are maybe not so much. Um, but the speed run route of White Palace, I would definitely say is actually a lot easier than the casual route of White Palace. Yeah, some of the really moves- not fair. Some of the moves are a little bit tight, like there, Emery was about a pixel too high and bonked. Um, but most of them are a little bit easier than that. There's a skip here that some other categories do that actually doesn't fight this King's Mold and pogles the clouds underneath it to avoid it. But again, going for speed, because we are so powerful in 106, it's actually faster to just fight the King's Mold. Um, and that little lever that we hit up there, little lamp, the lamp acted as a key on this elevator, and we're gonna ride the elevator up to the next section of White Palace. So everything in here is kind of a little bit of a puzzle, a little bit of uh, you gotta do this before you can do this. There's another elevator in this section, and it has two uh, sort of lantern locks, one for each side. And the first skip will be coming up here as instead of going up as intended, we go down and C dash underneath an entire section. So there were a bunch of, you know, saws things up there. And once again, cycles, it's all about the cycles as we go through here very cleanly and head up to the next room. And some of these have uh, various different strats. You know, there's not one, you know, singular way that you can get through here in, in a fast uh, pace. So if you're, if, if this is something that intimidates you, don't let the, you know, hardest hard strats turn you off because there are backups for a lot of things. The and strat that I did is basically the easiest strat. I took that so carefully. And we lit the lantern. Ooh, there's that swag, HK slides. Um, and we're gonna head to this side to unlock the other lantern. So this is um, 
one of the sections that okay, is... So Oh, go ahead. This room is uh, a new strat <laughs> um, that I just started implementing like last week. So um, let me see if I can get it. There we go. Second try. Nice. Um, and that room is actually one of the rooms that is strangely a part of another room. After we climb this large vertical room, um, the room that we'll be in next is actually connected to the room that we just left. Um, which is a secret that room ran no top. But there is no actual connections between the rooms. They just, if you were to turn on no clip and, and go through the walls, um, that skip skips the entire bottom section of this room, which is full of buzz saws and also thorns. And then here we have a breakable floor that lets you skip another section of saws. Uh, right, you land time. right on top of a lever, which is surprisingly easy to miss. <laughs> uh, but M got the lever, turned on the lantern, and we're going to take the elevator up. And now is the time. If you put in toward the path of pain incentive, here behind this secret hidden wall is the path of pain. Um, and if you read that lore tablet there, it tells you that to witness secret sealed, one must endure the harshest punishment. Um, and this is the hardest platforming challenge in the game for sure. So lots of thorns, lots of saws, lots of, lots of sharp things. And the first room is like one of the hardest rooms in my opinion, second only to the last of the rooms. So we'll head up here, pogoing through the wings molds. And if you um, are doing Path of Pain casually um, and don't make it all the way through, this section that we're doing to the left actually opens uh, a shortcut to the right so that you don't have to do this particular section more than once. Uh, and this is one of the only sections that also doesn't have uh, an infinite soul total until uh, the next stop right up here. So, if I'm we want to do a few more, oh, sorry. Uh, I just, I just had a question. Did you call those flying things wings mold? Yes. Yes. The 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 guys with the swords uh, are actually kings molds, and the little flying guys are wings molds. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> yes. But, so, uh, if we have more donations, no, it's a good time. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. We have a $77 donation. Oh, $77 and 77 cent donation from Anonymous saying, All-Star Runner and Commentary Crew here. Let's show our support by bringing this Path of Pain home chat. And I'm sure we will. Thank you so much for your contribution. And we have a $10 donation from Nick saying, Nailsmith and Shio are the best couple. Here's to keeping them together. Do we have some time for more? Yeah. Excellent. We have a $50 donation from herself saying, thank you to all the lady runners for showing off extreme speed running skill for a great cause. Thank you so much for your contribution to Malala Fund, who is, by the way, working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give girls a secondary education, invest in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. You can learn more at Malala.org. And we are here in the last room of Path of Pain. Um, definitely the hardest room of the path. And another one that's very cycle-based. And the cycles have a very odd rhythm to me. Like, no matter how many times I do this room, it just always feels a little bit weird. So everybody give M your good vibes as we get through here and we need to not just finish the platforming section, but once we get to the other side, there is a battle that we need to complete to uh, finish out the path. So a couple of the king's molds down here. If you notice, they have four arms. And uh, inside of that armor, they actually look like the collector. Um, there's oh, wow. a secret hidden workroom in the palace, and it has a mold. Um, that basically looks like the king's molds and the and the collector, and uh, 
some kind of weird experimentation the White King was, was putting on in here. Who knows why the Collector decided that uh, collecting grubs was more important than guarding the White Palace. But we get our little cutscene. If we had the Hunter's Journal, we would get a little Hunter's Journal entry. And that was the Path of Pain. Very nicely done. Thank you. Platforming yeah. is not my strongest suit. You can probably tell from watching me run this that um, I, I primarily am good at combat in this game, and that's perfectly fine as a speedrunner. You know, whenever your strengths are, play to them. Um, but it is a lot of fun doing Path of Pain, so thank you for donating towards that. Uh, Pugwing that lantern was another one of the big skips that you have in Path of Pain. It skipped a huge section to the right. And if you mess it up the first time, there's actually a secondary backup lantern. Um, Pogwing up in between those saws is a smaller little shortcut and then possibly the best little shortcut, this de developer intended tunnel underneath one of the most irritating sword tunnels in the game. Um, I wish I'd known about that. <laughs> yeah, that's the reaction <laughs> everyone of does. everyone that sees it. <laughs> Wait, that exists? Yeah, it exists. Um, and coming into this room, we're going to be doing a fun little trick. Uh, First try. See, it's easy. Nice. Uh, that was called Thorn Jump or Thorn Yump. Um, so Monstela actually found the original version of that. And one day while messing around with his version, which is extremely precise, it requires two perfect full jumps. Um, I accidentally landed there. And this was before we had the uh, hitbox mod so that we could see where all of these little jutting corners were. Um, yeah, but people don't go for it because it is a little bit slower if you were to fail it, even though it's faster if you do get it. And here, uh, hitting the Pale King with Fireball saves just a little bit of time because the charm can finish bouncing before we dash over to it. And we'll pick it up to, pick, to get the other half of the King Soul which acts as a key to a birthplace and will allow us to go and upgrade it. But we do have a couple more errands to finish on the way. Um, some of the last little items. We're going to head over here to the other basin bench that we unlocked earlier and use it to switch out our charms. We need to have a uh, 6 and 15 blue masks. Oh god, we need to have a lot of yeah. blue masks. <laughs> it's 15, <laughs> but Joni's gives uh, 17, I think, on this patch. Uh, they did nerf it, so if you watch when 12 percent speed runs, you notice that they actually do use the other lifeblood charm that I didn't put on. And here we'll pay tax. The fountain is actually holding the vessel fragment that we're about to purchase. And for $3,000, we will finish off our third soul vessel before heading down into the birthplace. That um, soul vessel was so surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it was not expecting this. <laughs> um, and we will be oh, heading into uh, the Lifeblood core room um, through the mysterious blue door. And I'm pretty sure we're about to see some of my very favoriteest swag. Um, so once you get the dais activated, you can kind of line up with that uh, foliage that's dangling by the door. And the night is actually flashing slightly blue in time with the door uh, unlocking. And if you go at exactly the right time, you'll see Dash cleanly through the door and that swag door. Um, and it's worth it, even though there are some faster things that you can do now. OK, it's worth it because it's swag. Yeah, that's my loss. I haven't switched over <laughs> at all and I don't plan to. <laughs> We're going to neatly avoid all these spikes. Um, there's also an arcane egg below here, which is one of the few items in the game you can be locked out of in a casual. Um, you need to go left first and go underneath everything in order to pick it up, because once you pick up the lifeblood court arm, you're kicked out of the door and it is closed forever. Um, hopping up to that little platform triggered the birthplace to start opening, and while the floor crumbles, we're going to go in here and use our wraiths to get our upgraded void spell, which is called Abyss Shriek. Um, Abyss Shriek is more popular uh, in more current patch runs, even though they are finally seeing the true way of flukes also. 
but in 1221 there are some uh, buggy hitbox things that mean that it doesn't always hit properly, especially when you do two back to back. So um, it's not a bad spell, but it's a much better spell in current patch than it is on this version. We'll see a lot more of Abyss Street in uh, Pantheon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think we ever said the damage values, but for reference, Fluke is 112 damage and Shriek is 120 damage. So they're actually very, very close um, to the same power of spell. Yeah. Um, and Shriek has, what, four hitboxes and it's 120 if you hit with all of them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, 30 per. Yeah, so with the buggy hitboxes, it's much harder to get full damage out of Abyss Shriek on this patch. Yeah, if you want to do math about it. <laughs> I mean, um. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> um, we're here, we've basically gone into our own dream and we're climbing out of the corpses of our siblings. Um, and we're going to make this climb to unlock the full potential of the King Soul and uh, turn it into the Void Heart. So, oof. Um, yeah, that's damage, a little bit tight. The damage response here can be very unforgiving. You see that sent M all the way back to the bottom. Uh, okay, we're not going for it. <laughs> I just want to get um, out of here. <laughs> and this is similar, but not identical to the normal Abyss Climb. Uh, for one thing, there are no crawlids in here, and for another, the platforms are just a little bit slightly different. But the, although we can't read it since, you know, I don't think we ever mentioned that, but we did. you know, the, the GDQ viewers are smart, and I'm sure they realize that we're running in simplified Chinese because gotta go fast. Um, yeah. <laughs> Chinese is actually, I can't believe we're mentioning this like last thing in the run, but Chinese is like, <laughs> um, if you've ever seen like instant text in Pokemon, it like clears the text boxes immediately um, whenever you've just mashed twice. So um, if you're mashing all of the face buttons, which all progress text, um, you see that text moves very, very quickly. Yeah, and it's not as intimidating as it might seem because all the charms have pictures. You know what the charm looks like. And so the only thing you really need to know is, you know, which side is yes and which side is no. Um, for the stag stations, what a lot of runners will do is actually make notes as far as how many up or down they need to navigate. So they don't need to know the name of the stag station. Um, and there's also the small map of the stag stations there, so you can kind of see where you're headed. Um, since we had the king soul on, while we were doing that climb, it was busy regening our soul. So we have full soul as we head here into the Nightmare King Grim fight. On 1221, we do not have to wear the Grim Child. So we can just come in here with our full combat build. And I'll let you guys uh, listen to this music for a little bit and then we can maybe do some more donations. Giving a moment to chat, uh, for chat to listen to that the awesome music in Hollow Knight. I just want to update everybody that we are uh, just under $700 away from reaching $80,000 total raise for Malala Fund. Thank you, everybody who has contributed so far. But let's try to see if we can get 80 k I know we can do it, chat. Um, and we have some donations coming in. $25 donation coming in from MacMog saying, I had a tasty Chala night for breakfast today with my Wendy's hot drink. Have we run this bit into the ground yet? <laughs> Emery and, and Colette and Sabira, do you know about Wendy's hot drink? No, I do not. <laughs> no, I don't either. I, I, know, I, I know that it's a thing and I don't know why it's a thing. Yes, I, I learned about this a couple days ago. So now, now we all have to learn about it too. It's a training video for Wendy's hot drink. And let's see if we can get a $5 donation train going. Hot drinks for every grub. What do you, what do you think? Chat, can we do it? $5 what do you donut think, train? Let's do go, chat. Like hot drinks. Hot drinks, hot drinks for every grub. I think, also, I think um, that right there was the thing. Um, I ended up not 
getting uh, the the face on the floor, Dash, but uh, it was still pretty good. Um, but I'm gonna take that bench because we're gonna go on a quick detour. Um, this was not planned, but I am extremely underestimate. Um, oh wow, that's also the first time that we saw the uh, the Cdash glitch. Um, C-Dash glitch is a weird thing that can happen in this category, or um, in Hollow Knight in general, I think, where um, you're supposed to kill anything with 10 or less HP in front of you with C-Dash, but sometimes you just get knocked out of it because of jank hitboxes, I guess. I'm not sure uh, what causes it. And usually it's at the worst possible time. Uh, of course. Another one of those things that it's, you know, Murphy's Law, that whenever you really, really want that C-Dash to go through, that's when the C-Dash glitch is going to happen. Um, with the um, with the C-Dash that uh, Emery did in Dirt Myth um, and the one for the Seer that was attempted, um, if you do it right, uh, you C-Dash while you're still laying on the ground, so you're just dragging your face along the ground <laughs> the entire way as you C-Dash. And I didn't want to spoil the animation, but it just didn't happen either time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's really funny. You can't see the one with Seer, though, because usually the screen is still fading in. That's true. Yeah. But you but, know what's uh, happening. That one's really funny. Imagine. <laughs> uh, so you guys can see we're back in Green Path here, and I think chat knows where we're going. Uh, gotta give chat their money's worth. Of course. Oh. Um. So we're just a couple rooms away. We could probably fit in one donation here. If there's one handy. Yeah, sure thing. We have a $25 donation from Bookworm saying, let's get that bonus run. And we absolutely have gotten that bonus run. And we also have a bid war going for the custom skin for that bonus run. Um, and just to update everybody, Hat Kid is in the lead with $118, and Mimi Q is at 75. But remember, Emre said that she likes the spring skin, so be sure to get the donations in for this bid war and see your favorite skin in the bonus run. And I have to imagine those will close soon because we are very, very close to the end of the run. We're going to go get our happy couple that everybody, well, not everybody, that most of us wanted. Oh, we get the French girl pose. <laughs> oh, I'm too yeah. shy to sing. My heart will go on, but you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Look how cute they are there. And if you talk to him also, you know, Ronnie Joe thanks you. He talks about how he's discovered the joys of art. And it's like extremely sweet and wonderful and cute. And thank you, chat, for making that happen. Um, now, you so, may have noticed Emre just equipped yes. some odd charms there. <gasps> That's Magic a 2% chance. Magic Pog. <laughs> Let's go. This is so blessed. Oh my God, it's blessed. Uh, <laughs> so, Manderbug is like 1% chance. Also, this is Cyclone right okay, here. Menderbug okay. threw me off. I was gonna show off Snail Knight. So I was planning on taking the Dirt Mouth Bench anyway, but... <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Menderbug, Men <laughs> you know, you forget about Menderbug until he shows up and then it's just shock. Um, but the, the door to the Black Egg Temple is another place where you can get momentum storage. So anything that puts you uh, like into movement you can extend that movement if you're doing it when you open the door. So lots yeah. of different options. So what for. I just did right there, we don't normally do that in the run, but I know that we're not going to have time to wait through the long credits. Um, so I opened my menu there to make sure that I had 106% and I do. So this is a valid complete run, not 105% world record. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the world sense, which... Uh, I never learned the name of until long after my casual. Um, but we're going to be fighting Hollow Knight and Radiance here, and the end is going to come very, very quickly. One of the reasons that NKG is fought in 106% is because Hollow Knight and Radiance are really a couple of pushovers with this build, um, and the fights are going to be over very, very quickly. Um, 
So Grim kind of in some ways is the final boss of the run. Using Cyclone to get quite a bit of soul here. We want to go into Radiance with as much soul as we can. Um, and then Hornet's going to make an appearance to crack open our brother's head and let us go visit the Radiance. Um, and here we go into the final arena where we will challenge the sun. And um, I guess since we're getting close to the end of the run, this is a good place to fit in a couple last donations if we have them. Sure thing. We have a $25 donation from Lizzie Berry saying, can we get to 80K tonight? I think we can. I do too. Five tickets to the $5 train. Let's go. Choo choo. And a $5 donation from Reverend Gumby saying, hot drinks for every grub. And speaking of grub, we do have a prize uh, that is a Hollow Knight Grub Curler Wall Art. $10 minimum donation. And that's two hot drinks for grubs. It's a win-win. Check out the full prize list at gamestonequake.com. We're already moving into platform phase here and regular Radiance always spawns on the middle platform. So all you have to do is wait for her to appear right there and then get in your damage. Um, and just like that, we're in the climb and we are going to be ending soon. Uh, hollow D's in your heart chat. <laughs> I don't think the GDQ um, chat has them. Yeah, time is gonna be whenever the screen is fully black. Um, after this fade out. Also, flashing lights warning for this section. Um, both of the Radiance kills have flashing light, light warnings because of these bright orbs that come out. But yeah, that was Hollow Knight 106. Uh, this was my first serious category of this game and it was an absolute honor to get to show it off and I am truly grateful for the opportunity. And if y'all are interested in speedrunning Hollow Knight, um, we do have a community. Uh, you can find it from our speedrun.com page, I believe. And we have a ton of resources. Even Rando is excellent. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess I should start getting ready for the Pantheon of Hollow Nest run soon. What a fantastic run. Thank you so much for showcasing Hollow Knight 106%. Uh, and and Path, Path of uh, Pain, right? We, we did a lot during that run. Thank you so much. And for the excellent commentary from Colette and Sabira, thank you, thank you for showcasing Hollow Knight. It was a joy to watch. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you, chat, for being so wonderfully su supportive and meeting those incentives and GG Emery. GG. GG. GG indeed. And we even unlocked the bonus run at S <laughs> Do I even want to say this number again? I will. $77,777.77. We reached that exact amount actually during the run and we unlocked Pantheon of Hollow Nest. And after a quick break, we will get to see that bonus run. And be sure um, to get your donations in for the bid war for the custom skin. Hat Kid is still in the lead with 118 and Mimikyu is in second place with 75. So, if you want to see your favorite custom skin in the bonus run, be sure to donate to that bid war. All right, everyone. I thoroughly enjoyed that Hollow Knight run. Did you? We'll take a short break. And we'll get ready for this next run. We have a $10 donation. The little bow with no comment. Thank you so much for your contribution. And this skit uh, with a $25 donation with no comment. Thank you so much for your contribution. And speaking of breaks, chat, you deserve a break too. Get up, stretch, get some water. Self-care is best care. We want you to enjoy the marathon as best as you can. Thank you everybody for your contributions to Malala Fund that is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. You can learn more about Malala Fund at malala.org. 
And coming up, we have Pantheon of Hollowness, which is the bonus run that we unlocked during Hollow Knight 106%. So don't go away. There's some more speedy games to come after this short break. All right, welcome back everybody to Frost Vitals 2022. I'm Spectralite, your host for the final run of the night. It's a bonus game and we unlocked it during our last Hollow Knight 106% run. The bonus game will be Pantheon of Hollow Nest. I am so excited to watch this bonus run. This is my first time ever seeing Hollow Knight and it's super, super exciting. It makes me want to play. Um, and can we get another round of applause for our runner and commentators? They did an excellent, excellent job showcasing Hollow Knight. Let's see some GDQ claps in the chat. And I see some donations coming in. We have a $25 donation from A Mind Half Full saying, Hollow Knight is one of my favorite games, but I haven't managed Pantheon of Hollow Nest myself. So I'm excited to see it run tonight. As am I, as am I. And we have a $50 donation from The Sound of Fence with no comment, but thank you so much for your contribution to Malala Fund. And just to remind everybody, this is your final call for the bid war for the custom skin in this bonus run. We have Mimi Q in the lead. Oh, taking the lead after that short break at $275 and Hat Kit sitting at $118. We have a little bit more time, so get your donations into that bid war. And just to remind everybody, we do have some awesome Hollow Knight prizes that are still up for grabs through the end of this run. So if you want 
a Perler Big Grub wall art or a, a Hollow Knight art piece or a Hollow Knight holographic print bundle, be sure to check out GDQ or GameZoneQuick.com at the prizes in the prizes tab and donate and get entered to win some awesome prizes. We are just over halfway to 80K. I think we can make it by the end of this run, chat. Let's do it.